Welcome to the sound check for Hobbs Eagle football tonight. Playoff round one as the Hobbs Eagles take on the Clovis Wildcats here in the 6A at Watson Stadium. Ty Friend along with Ron Gunner, Tiffany Stuber back at the station as we are doing a sound check to get ready for this contest. Pre-game show is about uh, 13 minutes away, so we'll get that officially started on our platforms, uh, also on the radio at Cool 95.7. Don't forget the internet, HobbsAmerica.com, YouTube on the Hobbs Sports page, and the Cool 95.7 Facebook page. That's all what we're giving you tonight in terms of coverage. Uh, this is a broadcast game, both video and audio for you tonight as the Hobbs Eagles take on Clovis for the first time. Of course, first win for the Eagles was early in the season. Hobbs winning 41-13 to in Clovis to start the season off in August. So a pretty big run of a, a win there. But, of course, Clovis winning the district championship, 4-0 record, beating Los Lunas. Upset win last week in Clovis. So that put them into the uh, state tournament, uh, state playoffs and get that seed number nine to come here tonight. So they moved up quite a few spots from 13 to nine with that district championship. We'll get into the pregame show here in 13 minutes or so. Let me turn over to Ron to get him a sound check as well. All right, this is Ron and my sound check. You know, it's gonna be an interesting game. Uh, Clovis kind of basically just backed or got into it basically because of the uh, district win. And uh, before that, uh, it was uh, Coach McCraw who had come in last year. He was actually to give you a little history about what he is about. He was a Levington Wildcat when he was in high school. He graduated there. He actually uh, was a Boleyn Eagle head coach for one year before he quit and just on the same day went ahead and got uh, hired on for the Clovis Wildcats. So that meant he went from an Eagle to a Wildcat, which he was in the beginning when he was Levington. But uh, yeah, he has been there for two years. He has had a, uh, a losing record of eight and uh, 11, I believe. And uh, he did get in with a five and five this uh, season, like I said. He is in the playoffs, and uh, they're hoping for a win. Hobbs is going to come in with a strong game. We're going to talk about that in about uh, 10 minutes or so for the pregame. So keep it right here as we uh, get back to action here in about 10 minutes. Still got us there, Tiffany? Yeah, your volume's good. Thank you. Y'all going at 45 for um, start time for on air. Okay. Did you did you hear it on the internet yet or? Yeah, your volume's good. Okay. Thank you. your scoreboard ready.
much time till pregame. About five minutes. Okay. Thank you. I forgot mine was off. Oh, good. And you can see the numbers. Black and gold. I was afraid they were going to be white and yellow. <laughs> but we can see those. Did they do the coin toss already? I don't think they went out there yet. The other team's already it. taken off. Yep. That's about time. Oh, by the way, I don't know if you knew or not, but Max Preps was missing two of the games for rushing and passing. For what? For uh, Clovis. Mm -hmm. They had the numbers, but they didn't have the totals. Yeah, they were. S yeah, they missed some touchdown totals too. I've noticed on yeah. the charts. I don't exactly. know if you forget what the problem was, but again, the same thing. It was on Carl's bed, and it was on another game. I can't remember right this hot second, but they didn't have, for whatever reason, they had the the numbers on there, but they didn't have the totals. So when they did team totals, they weren't correct. And so I did the uh, totals and averages and all that fun stuff. In fact, I'll tell you right now, I have a feeling that it's going to be, it won't be, Jet Stone won't be uh, the quarterback tonight. I think it's going to be uh, Jimenez. I doubt it. No, I think so, because I... No. Is Stone has more rushing yards when he's not a quarterback. Uh, I think he's going to be start. And also, Jimenez has more passing yards. He only averaged about six to seven passes a game, though. No, I know that. Three minutes still intro. Doesn't matter who's starting because they both are runners. They can both, they're going to be both in the backfield, so. I didn't see a whole lot of numbers on Humana as for running. I mean, I'm thinking of the other guy that's... Uh, Cash Roberts. Yeah. yeah. No, I know. Um, but I think the, the one that ran the most in one game was Jet Stone. 296 yards rushing. I think that's because Cash was out. Actually, it was. Uh, Cash Roberts missed one game, and that was the one where Stone ran for almost 300 yards. And uh, three cheerleaders that wandered onto the field. A minute thirty to intro. Thank you. How did our sponsorship list go up or down on numbers? Up. Or added on or added on, yeah. Yeah, there's fifteen sponsors now. Uh, what was Monica doing on KZOR this afternoon? A remote for something. Okay. And let's split that that sponsor list into t two halves. Don't 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 do them all at once. 
Oh, okay. Because that'll be overkill. Yeah. So when we do, we'll just make more, we'll make more. I'll do one, you do one, whatever. But we need to rotate and kind of get more in this right. this game than normal. Well, so I can do that real quick. We can't read no, we can't read read no 15 names. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just draw a line between the half of them. That's all you need to do. You don't have to rewrite them. Oh, I thought you wanted one, too. No, oh, yeah, that's, that's right. 30 to intro. If you do the first set, I'll do the second half. Just put a line underneath the first yeah, set. Yeah, seven, let's eight. see. Eight, seven, two, four, six, eight. Who do we appreciate? All right. Make it real bold so we can no, tell I am. cut off. We've already won there once. How <laughs> much time we got? A minute. Starting intro now. Of course, we did. We had a higher seed. The heck 15 seconds to go. It's like saying the sky's blue. Hey, Ron, I sent you a picture of how the sponsors bar looks on the camera because it's bigger this time. Hmm. Do we need to change our angle or what? No, no I just be aware of it. Just him know. I just got to be aware of it. Three, two, one, go. Welcome everyone to Watson Stadium. Time for Hobbs Eagle football. We're live for playoff action. Time friend Ron Gunner, Tiffany Stuber on HobbsAmerica.com, YouTube, Cole 957 Facebook page, and of course a lot more platforms throughout the night as we have an exciting game tonight. Your Hobbs Eagles are taking on the Clovis Wildcats, round one of the 6A. Uh, both teams coming with a five and five record. And Ron, of course, uh, Clovis comes through the back door. Uh, ended up with that five and five record because of a four zero record in district and knocked off Los, Los Lunas last week in a one game, one point game, thirty to twenty nine to, to get their way into that number nine seed. They were thirteenth in the Max Preps poll before that, but uh, squeaked their way uh, just one underneath the Hobbs Eagles. Of course, Hobbs beat Clovis uh, first game of the season, forty one thirteen. So that kept Hobbs a little bit with some breathing room there to be above Clovis. But district champs usually get a lot more credit, but Clovis had kind of a weaker district this year uh, with teams that. Uh, uh, finished up uh, one and two as uh, Clovis, Los Lunas second with the one loss, but the rest of the teams in the uh, conference or the district there had a combined seven and 23 record. Santa Fe High, Albuquerque, and Capital. So not a lot of competition in that uh, district, and so not a lot of credence given to them, a lot of weight uh, for some of the wins that they did get this season. But you got to credit Clovis for that win last week. Right. Uh, coming from behind in that game down, what was it, 10 points at halftime or whatever it was, 12 points. Come back and get that second half under their belt and get the win. You guarantee it's going to be a payback situation as well, Ron, because, uh, again, Hobbs got him big, big in the first game of the season. This is going to be for all the marbles here. The first game doesn't matter. The cannon, which is a little trophy the team win that in right. the regular season. Uh, Hobbs won that one, of course, by beating Clovis. That little trophy ain't going to matter if you're staying home next week and a uh, potential to play Cleveland on the road. Exactly. And uh, Cleveland, or sorry, <laughs> Clovis is one of those teams that likes to run. In fact, that's their bread and butter. They don't really pass a whole lot. They're expecting to uh, run. But, yeah, you're right about this fact that uh, they got in literally by the skin of their teeth simply because they won the district. Otherwise, they wouldn't have gotten in at all. They were just below the radar as far as uh, before that in the playoffs. They did beat Los Lunas, Los Lunas. In fact, it had been a while since they had beat Los Lunas. In fact, it was the only team in the district that had a winning record. If you go back to uh, what their winning and losing record is, they're 1-4 and four against teams that are under four, 500. And, again, that's because of Los Lunas. It wasn't for that to be 0-4. Oh against teams that were under 500 and that is not something that you can uh, get away with as far as you know playing in the playoffs they haven't really been tested as well in fact you know the uh, the best and worst t game that they had this season was El Dorado they were up big they were up to 49-20 uh, at the half against El Dorado but lost in the end after allowing 44 points from El Dorado 64-56 was the final for El Dorado even though they had a losing record then ended up with four and a six. Still, El Dorado came back strong against them in the second half. 
and show that they could do something that uh, Clovis just could not stop. So that is something else that, you know, maybe we could look at that as far as Hobbs looked at the, uh, uh, the tapes as far as, you know, what they did against El Dorado and uh, see what El Dorado did in the second half that was so successful. Or maybe it's just the fact that, you know, don't do what they did in the first half and allow 49 points from Clovis while you yourself only scored 20. We got to compare that with last week's game with the Hobbs Eagles, though, with Carlsbad. Kind of a stalemate. No points scored in that first quarter. Hobbs ended up winning 35-12, to but really no dominant offense in this game. We knew Carlsbad had a pretty tough runner in Mendoza. He uh, he did get over 100 yards, 108, so he was pretty much their bread and butter on the offense. Uh, he was 108 out of the 115 on the running game for Carlsbad, so we pretty much right. shut that down. He got triple digits, but still uh, 104 in the passing game, so Carlsbad with only 219 yards in that game. But Hobbs uh, did not even get past at 300 mark. They were at 292. Saul Armanderas on the ground with uh, 22 carries for 99 yards, two touchdowns. Passing game uh, was at 171 in that game. Uh, Deshaun Franklin had four catches for 74, two touchdowns, and uh, Jeremiah Hawkes, five catches, 39 yards, and a touchdown as well. So three uh, passing touchdowns and two rushing for Saul Armanderas. So Hobbs at 292, 171 pass, 121 in the rushing game. So Again, only beat them by about 70 yards or so in terms of head-to-head. -head. You know, not excellent offensive numbers in that game, but again, it was pretty much a stalemate going through at least one quarter of action and pretty close game until the end there. Hobbs did manage to get 11 tackles for Tristan Davis, a linebacker, and the Eagles did a good job of stopping guys behind the line. They had 12 tackles for losses in that game, so that's a good combined effort to keep Carlsbad at bay. Looks like we have the National Anthem starting here at Watson Stadium. Again, week number one of the playoffs. Your Hobbs, Eagles, and Clovis will be back in 90 seconds on the Hobbs, Eagle Network. Back live here at Watson Stadium, the week one of the playoffs, 6A. Ty Friend, Ron Gunner, and Tiffany Stuber with you. They're playing the Hobbs Eagle marching fight song going on right now as we're getting ready for a big game with the Clovis Wildcats. Loser will be out. The winner will play Cleveland next week, the number one seed in Rio Rancho. That'll be next week, either Friday or Saturday, and we'll get back with you on that as this game progresses. We mentioned uh, from last week's game, the Hobbs Eagles uh, did not score. Neither did Carlsbad in the first quarter. It was a 14-6 lead at halftime. And then the Eagles came back and really uh, put it on there in the second half to get the win. Uh, we should mention, though, that the Hobbs Eagles kind of had to st uh, struggle the first couple weeks of the district schedule. They were 0-2, came back and won all three of their final games and uh, got the, the victories they needed to punch their ticket. And they stayed in the top ten for much of the season. That was a pretty good, uh, better than the cap of Coach Stevens with this squad that had a little bit of shaky moments, uh, moments in the pre-district schedule but right. with the likes of Lovington and Artesia and Roswell. But those are some of the toughest teams in their divisions. Yeah, and that's one of the reasons why they had such a good ranking was because of their strength and schedule. They uh, We don't uh, play any lightweights, and neither does Levington. A lot of other uh, Lee County teams do the same thing. They they uh, up their game by playing some tough opponents, and uh, that way that happened too. But uh, the problem was, is uh, like Coach Stevens said, 
from the beginning of the season on that uh, things just didn't click like they wanted it to. Uh, you know, you drop the ball here, drop the ball there, you get a couple of interceptions, you do some uh, bad penalties, and before you know it, you're looking down at the wrong side of a score, and you can't uh, seem to get back into the game for whatever reason. So they have been struggling with that a couple of games, but they came back strong. Like you said, they got three games in a row in the district. Yeah, they were, they were weaker teams, but still, the reason why you play the game is because anybody can win on any given Friday night, and uh, that is something that uh, Hobbs knows. They cannot overlook this uh, Clovis team at all. That's one of the things I was doing when I was researching and getting ready for this game. I was uh, too busy part of the time looking at uh, the next game, but you can't do that. you got to win this game to get to the next game, and Hobbs definitely knows that. Of course, Clovis knows that as well. That's the reason why they're here, simply because they won one good game against Los Lunas, and that got them in, to, you know, to got their ticket in for the playoffs, and they're going to make the most of it, as they always do. They haven't been in the playoffs at least in a couple of years, and uh, they want to go back and uh, win that, uh, have that winning tradition one, uh, once again. Guaranteed throughout the week of practice, Coach Stevens and his crew definitely looking at the running game of Clovis. That is their complete maximum of efficiency is on the ground. Quarterback Jet Stone had 141 yards rushing last week against Los Lunas in a 30-29 win. He wasn't even the top rusher, though. Cash Roberts, their running back, 220 yards. He had a long of 44, two rushing touchdowns. But Jet Stone, we mentioned first, he had three rushing touchdowns as the quarterback. So they had five uh, scores on the ground in that victory and 388 yards in in terms of total offense in that co or, uh, total offense so six and a half yards a carry which is pretty devastating Hobbs definitely gonna have to be ready for that running game that's their bread and butter they're not going to get away from it uh, they've been averaging about six to seven passes attempts a game not just completions we're talking attempts they won't throw the football hardly at all and so the Eagles got to be stout on that front line they got to get their linebacking core ready we mentioned we got some very good uh, linebacking uh, core members for this squad this year. If you just take a look at some of the guys stepping up this season, really doing a good job. We mentioned uh, Tristan Davis. He currently leads the team with 113 tackles, mm -hmm. five and a half sacks, uh, six hurries on the quarterback as well. So he definitely is going to be helping the cause tonight. Uh, Gustavo Diaz Castro, 94 tackles, 9.4 tackles a ball game. Definitely a very important part of the uh, Hobbs Eagle uh, defensive lineup. Uh, Zayden McPherson, who sat out last week with an injury, 88 tackles on the season. He has 11 a game and has four for losses. But I think one of the big numbers is, and you look at Hernandez, one of the other linebackers, he's fourth on the team in tackles at 67, but leads the team in tackles for losses with 14. So that's very important for, to this game tonight because Clovis likes to run the football. You drop him in the backfield, that's going to close up the offense. Exactly, and that's exactly what they need to do is uh, the line needs to step up, be able to get against that offensive line of Clovis and be able to slow and stop the run. Now, we know that they're going to run because that's all they can do. I mean, unless they have uh, Jimenez out there passing, they generally run, 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 and Tristan uh, the uh, Stone is always running out there no matter what he does, and he has some big numbers. In fact, 296 is uh, one of his biggest games he's had this season, so he's going to want to do that as well as uh, get other other players in there to uh, run the ball. Last week, uh, Clovis defense stepped up big. They held the uh, Los Lunas Tigers to 125, uh, 28 yards of offense in that game. Normally, uh, Los Lunas throws for 146 yards. They only had 24 in that game with two receptions. And in the running department, uh, they had 21 rushes for 104 yards, and they normally have 173 yards rushing. So Clovis shut them down on both aspects of their offense and with that big 30-29 to 29 win. It was 22-12 at halftime. Los Lunas up by 10. Clovis outscored them 18-7 to 7 in the second half for the one-point win. The district championship at 4-0. But again, as I said a few minutes ago, Ron, very weak district. Let's face it. Three teams underneath the, right. uh, Clovis and Los Lunas, 7-23 and 23 combined record in the state this year. Yeah, Clovis was already automatically going to have three district wins, at least if they played the right way. But this team, Clovis, they're an option run uh, offense. So what they, that means is the quarterback is going to run the ball for a while, see if there's an opening. If there is, he's going to take it. Uh, if not, he's going to pass it off or, or give it off to his uh, running back, who's probably going to be near him, and uh, try to see if they can get more yards either to the left or the right. So they won't be going up the middle as much, but you know if, if Hobbs can get up the middle and get them as quickly as possible, that will slow down and stop their run and also make them kind of uh, question what they're going to do from uh, play to play. 
Let's look at the offenses really quickly. Very big difference. A running game for Clovis, 2,594 yards this year, 37 touchdowns on the ground, only 551 passing yards and seven touchdowns. So 37 of the 44 TDs have been on the ground. And, of course, you mentioned the uh, the Stone Kid. He definitely is uh, one of their big aspects in terms of the running game, 1,103. Uh, Stone is the quarterback. And uh, Cash Roberts, the starting running back, 1,149 yards. 18 touchdowns for the quarterback on the ground, 14 touchdowns for uh, Roberts, the running back. So 32 out of the 37 scoring attempts on the ground is in the running game. Not much passing this year at all for that uh, Clovis ball club. Your Hobbs Eagles, a lot more balanced offensively, 1,760 yards in the air. Of course, they've had Callaway and Beatty both at quarterback this year. Hobbs at 1,506 rushing yards, so a total of 3,266. They averaged 326 yards yards a game. Of course, we know the uh, starting uh, running back for the Hobbs Eagles is definitely one to be reckoned with, uh, Saul Armadaris. He's got close to 1,000 yards. He needs 47 tonight. He's got 953 right now to make the 1,000-yard mark and 12 of the Eagles' 20 rushing touchdowns. Leading receiver is Hawkes Jeremiah, 730 yards in reception, seven touchdowns. Also, Justin Black, uh, two touchdowns and 407 yards. Franklin, 327, four TDs. And Rodriguez with 160 yards in receptions at two TDs. Best thing about the receiving core, Ron, all four of those guys have an average of double digits on receptions per play. So when right. they catch a the ball, they're not just going to go down. They're going to get the double digits and get the first down. Exactly. I mean, we're not we're not expecting a whole lot of play pass plays. But you can expect to see something different. They're going to try to mix it up a little bit to throw off Hobbs and see if they can get some yardage when they usually don't. So we're getting ready for the kickoff here. The Eagles wearing their black uniforms, gold numbers, the ones you can see a little bit better. And Hobbs going to go up against that Wildcats squad with the white uniforms and the purple numbers. Eagles and the Wildcats going head to head here. First round of the 6A state playoffs live on the Hobbs Eagle Network as we get ready for the kickoff here. As both teams excited to move on to hopefully play Cleveland next week as we get ready for the kickoff from Taylor. It's going to be a bouncer from the 22-yard line to the near side. Picked up behind the 20 to the 18, running backwards to the 15. Back to the 20 right, hash, 25, 30, and brought down at the 33-yard line. Finally, the Eagles able to pull him down. That was Carice Phillips, a junior return man. So he went all the way back to the 18 backwards, then get up to the 33, about a 15-yard net return finally, but the Eagles get him down, throw him down on that far right sideline. Tried to run behind his blockers, got a little bit of extra effort after the fact that he was running north or east and west. Yeah, Hernandez, though, of the Eagles, he was flipped upside down and uh, had a little head roll. It was pretty cool. Should mention Jaden Taylor, the kickoff man for the Eagles, just a freshman, moved up a couple of weeks ago, doing some good stuff for the Eagles and really making it hard for those returns. First and 10 from the 33 for the Wildcats. Their quarterback is Stone, Roberts their tailback. They got double slots and it will be Roberts in the backfield. He's gonna get the handoff around the right end of the 35 and he'll just put his body flat against the ground there as he picks up two to get things started for the Wildcats. Looks just like uh, Carlsbad did last week, trying to get up the middle and not getting a whole lot, but did get about three. So second down and seven, they give them the extra yard on the forward progress out across the 35 to the 36 yard line. So uh, Oliver Hill, the big defensive tackle on the line for the Eagles, a man to make the wrap up for the black and gold. Second down and seven now from the 36. One receiver left, double slot, single setback is Roberts. You won't see much change in this formation for Coach McCraw who did uh, graduate from Lovington High School, was also a coach there for a little bit. Hand up up the middle to Roberts, breaks the tackle, 40, 45, dragging people with him, and he's gonna finish up with a, about 10 yards. I think his knee went down at the 45, but he went right up the gut, make it 11 for Roberts. Yeah, that was a very strong run from uh, Roberts. We know he's a strong runner, he can, he can do it, and that time he really did. Got a big gain for that first down. Yeah, we mentioned that the uh, linebacking core is pretty stellar this season, leading the team in tackles. Three or four of those guys can step up at any time, but uh, front line's gonna have to be stout as well. They got to get some initial hitting on the uh, front line of Clovis with this running back core getting ready to go here. Stone has not run the football yet. He's the quarterback. One receiver right, which won't get much action tonight. Double slot, again, Roberts in the backfield. They're going to try the option, and being met in the backfield is Jet Stone going to get thrown down behind the 40-yard line. He's going to lose about six yards on the play. Cameron Hernandez is the one that got him in the backfield, and, uh, yeah, I don't know what he was looking for as far as the uh, quarterback. He was looking for some kind of a uh, flag. Wasn't going to get one, though, but instead just uh, had to get a lot of a loss of yards. 
Boy, the quarterback Stone was kind of palming the football, and he felt the pressure coming through the line. He didn't know if he wanted to option it or not. He just kind of palmed it. Luckily, he didn't fumble it for the Wildcats, and they would have had the ball lost in the backfield. But now they're facing a second down and 18 back at the 38-yard line on the right hash. Now back to a shotgun goes Stone. Twins left. Going to do the handoff delay. No, he keeps it. Goes up the middle instead of the 40 and falls down forward. Does not get back the, the loss of yards they had just seconds ago, but gets a few of them back. Looks like he's going to get four back for the Wildcats. Yes, indeed. And uh, that was a nice run, but not nice enough. Couldn't get back to the line of scrimmage like he hoped to. So it'll be a long third down. So far, Roberts has rushed three times for six yards and just one time for Stone for four. Third down and 13 now for the Wildcats at their own 43-yard line. Just underway here in the first quarter, live here at Watson Stadium. First round of the 6A state playoffs in the gridiron action. Of course, tomorrow, the number one team in the state, the Hobbs Eagles boys soccer team, will have a home matchup. Twins right, no receivers to the left side. Shotgun, Stone fakes the handoff, one-step drop. Fires down the middle, seam route over the shoulder. Wide open receiver. Ball was thrown to his outside shoulder. He was kind of looking in for just a second. Incomplete at the Hobbs Eagle 20-yard line. Missed coverage for the Hobbs Eagle secondary. Pass intended for Caden Lott. You won't see many balls in the air. That would have been a touchdown. That would have been just a little bit less overthrown. Yeah, and I, I think they should have done that on the third down, or second down. I mean, they shouldn't have done it on third down. Now they have fourth and long and it looks like they're going to go ahead and punt the ball. Fourth down and 12 from the 43 yard line. Eagles will send one back deep. Back about the 20. That's where the pass almost was caught there but wide open. Hawkins will be the back man for the Eagles to return. Long snap count here. Good snap. The kick will be away from about the 34. Kind of a short one. It'll take a drop at the Eagle 30 and roll the near sideline. Hawkins picks it up on the run to the 35 and runs out at the 36 yard line. Kind of hot to handle that time, but he was not going to let down and moves it right in front of the Hobbs Eagle bench on this near right sideline. So the first punt of the ball game for the Wildcats. So Hobbs will get their first offensive possession. Of course, they beat this Clovis team 41 to 13 back in August. The Eagles had three passing touchdowns and three for rushes. Jeremiah Hawkins had two catches for TDs and Justin Black had one, a 35 yarder. Sal Armadaris finished with 13 carries, 126 yards in that victory, 41-13. First and 10 from the 39. Back to pass, Callaway with the curl route. Caught by Hawkins at the 50 into Clovis territory. Shoves down his defender at the 45, and we'll have a first down. That'll be 16 for Hawkins to get things moving here. Yeah, that was a nice, perfect play. It was simple, it was easy, and it worked. And it also moved the chains as well. So first down, Eagles. On the first play of the ball game, at now the Clovis 40-yard line. First and 10 on the right hash. Two receivers left, one to the right side. Callaway back in shotgun once again. Has Armadaris behind him. Hawk is in motion right to left. Head off to Armadaris up the middle, puts his head down and files through. And he gets a little bit of a rolling action towards the end of that one, close to the 40-yard line. I think he was shy by about a knee there. And should get about four yards on that one on the mark. Oh, they're going to make it three. He said he went down sooner than that. Right. First rush of the ball game for the Eagles. They got trips left now. Receiver right. Second down and seven from the 42 of Clovis. So, oh, we got a big jump for the defensive line. Right side for Clovis. A couple of guys jumping way over the front there. Uh, that was John Royal and also Coulter Williams. Now, a lot of their guys go both ways for this Clovis team too, so maybe a little bit of exhaustion is gonna catch in in that second half. Oh yeah, definitely. They are limited on their players, so yeah, that's definitely, fatigue is definitely gonna be a factor for the Clovis Wildcats. First penalty of the ball game for Clovis for five. Second down and two now for the Eagles at the Clovis 37 yard line on the right hash. Trips left, receiver right. Shotgun back to Callaway, two-step drop. He's gonna throw the spiral on the near sideline, right in the fingertips at the number 10 yard line. And running into the end zone, looks like pushing off a defender for the touchdown. That'll be a 37 yarder for the Hobbs Eagles, Isaiah Rodriguez with fingertip control on the near sideline for the touchdown. I don't know, did he have the presence to uh, catch that ball, but he also had the presence to go ahead and get into the end zone for that uh, nice little score. Hobbs up early, six to nothing as they go for the PAT. 53 yards in passing so far for Callaway. Perfect, two for two as we await the PAT. Beatty will come on for the kicking shore for the Eagles. Great way to start the game on the first drive. Hobbs with two passes and one rush and get the score. Oh, they get a bad snap, rolling with the ball. Black trying to throw it left corner of the end zone, over the shoulder for the two-point conversion. Not sure if that was a broken play or not. 
But the Eagles come up with the two-pointer. Hernandez is the one who caught it. Yeah, he was coming off the line that time, going hard as he gets the score. You don't hear Cameron Hernandez's name very often on the offensive side. Exactly. He plays linebacker for the Eagles defensively, one of the best tacklers on the team, but he's able to get the two-point conversion pass. Your Eagles up 8 to nothing here with 8.25 remaining first quarter. We're back in 30 seconds on the Hobbs Eagle Network. Your Hobbs Eagles lead eight to nothing here at Watson Stadium after a 30, 31 yard pass play for the Hobbs Eagles score. As going in the end zone, Isaiah Rodriguez picking it up for the Eagles, make that a 37 yard pass play. As we get ready for the kickoff, Taylor's gonna keep it end over end to the near sideline, caught him with a shoulder and a sliding catch at the 28 yard line for Clovis. Dangerous catch on the way there for Elias Lira near the Hobbs Eagles sideline left side. So their position will be about the 29-yard line. So the Eagles coming on the second time for defense. Clovis not showing too much in their first possession, Ron. They had three carries for Roberts. He was dropped in the backfield once for minus eight and only finished with six yards on three carries. Also, their quarterback Stone had a carry for four and 0 for 1 in the passing game. So kind of a three and out situation for Clovis on that first possession. Well, they did have a big, nice first, uh, first down with a big run. They did try to pass early on. So that's something for the uh, Clovis Wildcats as well. First and 10 from the 29 yard line for the Wildcats on their side of the field. Stone will take it underneath the center, hand it off around the right end, putting his head down hard and going straight up is Cash Roberts as he's gonna get about three yards on that one. So Roberts has had four of the five carries so far for Clovis and has nine yards. Big chunk of that number though is negative due to a drop in the backfield. Eagles get through quickly. Brings up a second down and seven for the Wildcats. Middle of the field at the 32-yard line. And they are not a fast-paced uh, offense like Hobbs is, so they're taking their time, making sure they get the call right. And everybody's in line, although we already know pretty much it's probably going to be another run. Yeah, well, we saw one pass, a wide-open receiver about 30, 40 yards downfield, but they overthrew him, did Stone. Got a slot left and right now in the backfield is... Cash, they do it, the option to the right side. Coming around the end is the 35, out of bounds, tiptoeing. And the different ball carrier that time, I believe that was Tyler Conley that got the flip out to the right. You're correct about that. And he's gonna get about two more yards, a lot of lateral running that time, not much more than that. Yeah, it was a uh, design play, of course, as you know. Option, he was trying to get uh, the most out of it, but uh, Tyler just could not uh, get enough room before he was run out of bounds. So three yard pickup for Conley, brings up a third down and five now at the 34 yard line. Matt in motion from right to left, who lines up in the backfield, puts on the brakes, that was a Caden Lott. Now everybody's looking to the sideline to coach McCraw to get the play call change here. Double slots once again. Down to six. Cash in the backfield, yep, the field clock down to two now. Give it up to uh, Cash, up the gut. Then tries to angle left, comes across the 35 and is brought down way short of the first down. Looks like he gets another three. Yeah, and uh, some nice sportsmanship out there as uh, 42 was patting his head. Uh, that was, of course, Diaz C uh, Castro, who had a really big game last week. In fact, he was one of the big players of the week for the Hobbs Eagles. Clovis going to face a fourth down and two now from their own 37-yard line. I can't imagine them going for it here in their side of the field with the Eagles up 8 to nothing. 7.06 remaining here in the first, and they're in an offensive formation, but you're going to bet there's going to be a long snap count. Long snap count is going on for Stone. Screams and looks over to his sideline, pulls out of it. Had a man in motion momentarily right to left and pulls back to the right side, Caden Lott. They're gonna go for it. The handoff to Cash on the right side, diving across the first down marker into the 41 yard line area. So he gets more than he needs. Looks like three and a half, make it four for Roberts. Right. He'll move the chains for the Wildcats. Their second first down in the ball game. And now he's got 16 overall on six carries as he comes across the 40 to the 41. It could be a kicking situation. It could just be the simple fact that they are very reliant on the running game and they know they can they can get those yards. Either way, yep, Clovis got the first down by double what they needed. They needed two, he got four. First and 10 now from the 41 yard line, still in Wildcat territory. Hobbs up eight to nothing in this one. Twins left, no receivers right. 
a slot left side, and back to shotgun goes Stone. Delays the handoff around the left end and getting piled up in the backfield. That will be Roberts going down quickly, so he doesn't cash in that time, does Cash Roberts. He's going to lose three on that one. Yeah, there was nowhere to go but backwards, and they definitely did that. So, you know, not all their plays are positive, and that was definitely a negative play for the uh, Clovis Wildcats. Hobbs has been getting some good uh, defense uh, this season from their cornerback stepping up, too. When you get those outside runs, you got to cut off those angles a little bit, and that time it happened. Loss of two, second down and 12 now from the 39-yard line. So they do only give him a two-yard loss on that one. I guess he had a little before progress. They're going to go at the handoff again. Angle right. No, the quarterback keeps it stoned to the far side. 45-50 into Hobbs territory and slides through at the Eagle 45. Great fake to the handoff. Then looked like he was going to option it for a second, but decides not to do it. Looks like 14, make it 13 for the quarterback. And he's got two carries for 17 yards. That's the third. Clovis first down as Stone continues to plug forward. Again, he's the second leading rusher on this team over 1,100 yards this season behind Roberts. And that's how he does it. Coach Stevens said it too. It's a, a threat. It's a dual threat. That option can be either way, and they, they use it to perfection. Split formation, making the wishbone. Now they're going to bring a man in motion to the left side. Going to hand the football off to the left. Putting his head down, battering ram style, and trying to get outside. But uh, Robert's going to get met in the backfield. Maybe gets back to the line of scrimmage if he's lucky. As Tristan. Coming, yeah, coming from the uh, deep secondary for the Eagles that time was Javen Hernandez, the sophomore, who's been seeing some great action on defense the last couple of games. Yeah, Tristan Davis was in there too. Definitely made a difference on that one. Uh, slowed down, stopped that run from happening. He did get back to the line of scrimmage, but still, it's going to be a long way to go for a first down for the uh, Wildcats. One thing in this game, Ron, is that a lot of the running game we see from Clovis keeps that clock moving. It's at 4-10 here in the first quarter. Hobbs up 8 to nothing. Clovis facing a second down and 10 from the Hobbs Eagle 46-yard line. Matted motion left to right is Roberts. Pitch it deep to him around the right end, but there's a whistle before the uh, run extends to the far right sideline. So it must have been some movement on the line. They do stop the action. I think it was from 10. I think that was a legal procedure, and it's going to be against uh, Clovis. Still waiting for the white cap to give us the signal up here in the booth. The ball was pitched way outside that time as they put Roberts in motion going to the right side of the scrimmage line. Clovis is backing up, so that's going to be a false start on the Wildcats. Their second penalty total of 10 yards. Last week, Eagles almost getting 100 yards in penalties. I'm sure that was a major focus of the Eagles talking in practice this week. Don't let the uh, handkerchiefs screw up plays. Exactly. No matter what you do, and they, that's what they've been doing the last couple of games too, is uh, ignoring those uh, bad penalties and uh, getting past it. Second down and 15 now for the Wildcats. Now back in their territory at the 49. Eagles have four in the front box. Receiver left for Clovis. Slots right and left. Back to pass, Stone in the pocket, spins left. He wanted to throw, he breaks pressure to the 50. 45 of the Eagles, left side to the 40, still up the sideline, puts his shoulder down and run out of bounds about the 36. We'll see where they're going to mark him out of bounds on this one. Hard to say about that one, but it looked like Cash Roberts moved before the ball was hiked, but again, not in the right angle to see that, just looked like it from this angle. Looks like they're just going to have 12 for Stone on that one. That'll be his third carry for 29 yards. Brings up a third down and three now for the Wildcats at the Eagle 39-yard line on the left hash. 3.46 remaining. He did get out of bounds here in the first quarter, so that does stop the clock. Hobbs still holding on to an 8-0 lead. And in case you were just joining us, the score for the Eagles, a 37-yard pass play from Owen Calloway to Isaiah Rodriguez and a two-point conversion to the linebacker slash receiver now, Cameron Hernandez, for the two-pointer. Here comes a third down in about two and a half for Clovis. They'll give the handoff right side. Here comes Roberts, and he angles right towards the first down stick. Still stays in the middle of the field. He needed to get about two and a half, and he's going to be very close. Might have gone down by a knee. He's going to be short yep. by about a yard or half a yard there. Exactly. He did not get it. So they're going to line up quickly to see if they can get to Hobbs to either move or uh, get that first down. Or get a hard snap count. No, it looks like it'll just be Stone going straight up. Quarterback keeper, he's going to plow ahead close to the 35. He will get about two yards. Yep. Coach McCraw steps out of the field and is pointing for the first down for the help out the official squad there. Stone gets the two yards he needed, and that'll be 31 yards on the ground for him. The fourth Clovis first down. So they've been kind of consistent moving the ball at times, but right. uh, they want to get something in the end zone as they trail the Eagles by eight. Yeah, this is their second drive of the game, and so far they've been doing – very methodical. They've only had one or two where they've gone backwards, but still they managed to get third and short, and they get the fourth down as well, so they get first downs, and they're still moving the ball. 2.45 left first quarter, still 8-0 Eagles. 
Ball's at the 35 of the Eagles. Clovis football near the left hash. One receiver far right to the Clovis sideline. Double slot, man in the backfield. Fakes the handoff, now the option to the right side coming around the end to the Clovis sideline right and run out of bounds after a three yard pickup. Oh, and there is gonna be a late hit on that one. I did see that when he was way beyond the uh, uh, out of bounds and even though it was, pro, it was probably pro, uh, uh, the momentum on both sides, it looked like there was a late hit. That was Phillips, the three yard pickup on that one. They had the stick still at the, uh, the original line of scrimmage. I'm not sure why they didn't go ahead and move at least the yardage that they picked up on that play. He did get about three. That would tack on 15, and they can get the whole 15 because they're outside the 30-yard line, so it won't be half the distance. Well, now they're going to because they weren't sure exactly what the flag was going to be, but now they're walking it off. I call the horse collar is what the personal ah. foul was. So 15-yard penalty against the Eagles. We talked about how they had to keep those penalties down. So that one penalty now is going to give them a first down Clovis at the 18, and that will be their fifth of the ball game first downs. And now going to be moving towards the Eagles red zone here on the right hash. Yep, they are in the red zone right now, Clovis is, and uh, they've got their uh, mouse watering for that first score of the game. And they're going to be trailing by two if they do score the touchdown because the Eagles convert on that two-point conversion. First and 10 from the 18, right hash. Stone. Will get the ball from the underneath the center and tries to hand it off. And it's a big pile up at the line of scrimmage. Not much going on there that time. See who got the football. I think that was Cash. Nope, I believe that's Roberts. So Roberts getting a, a run on that one. Uh, yeah, it was Cash Roberts. Excuse me. One yard pickup. I always think of Cash and forget about that he has a last name. Uh, exactly. Sometimes you just go with the first name, Cash, because it's so cool. Second down and nine from the 17-yard line of the Eagles, Clovis football. Down underneath two minutes left, first quarter. Very quick moving clock due to the running game of the Wildcats. They've thrown one pass, did not complete it. 0 for 1. Coach McCross says that's enough for a while in the air. Got a pair of receivers right. They got a man in the backfield is Roberts. Two slots to block. They put both of those guys in motion. They should have a flag on that play. They had three guys in the backfield moving around that didn't know where they were supposed to be, and you can't have that many people moving. Right. Two men came to the backfield, looked like they were in motion. Roberts started jumping ahead to get the ball, and so that's got to be a false start of movement five-yard penalty for Clovis. And you're right about that, and uh, I've just got an update on a score. Uh, Jal hits a surpriser at halftime. Tularoso is at 20, Jal at six at halftime once again. It looks like uh, Jal is having some troubles, some difficulties in that game. I don't know if that's much of a surprise because if you remember early in the season, Tillerosa came to Jow in a regular season non-district game and True. almost beat him at the last second, lost that game, and Jow pulled away at the W in that one. Second down and 15 now for the Wildcats at, their, at the Eagle 23-yard line. Got a man in the backfield, actually two or three of them now. It looks like wishbone look underneath the center of Stone. He's going to hand off to the, the tailback, and that's Roberts. No, he flips it out to the right instead. Roberts got the fake. They give it over to the right side of the hash and up across the 15 down to the 13-yard line. Yeah, Roberts is definitely a good for uh, giving gains. In fact, that will make it third and short once again, about third and four roughly. That's Stone getting 12 on that one. He kept the football at the last second that time. He's had two, three carries for double digits, 13, 12, and 12. So he's a big part of this offense. 43 yards on the ground on five carries. That'll be the six, or make it the third down and two, I should say, uh, from the 13-yard line of the Eagles. On the right hash with one minute remaining first quarter. Hobbs up eight to nothing over the Wildcats. Of course, the Eagles playing the Cavemen last week, their final district game to go three and two in district, five and five overall, just like the Wildcats. Zone's gonna tuck it under his left bicep and backpedals around the left side of the line, falls forward. He'll get some positive yards on this and close to the first down marker, still at the middle of the field. I think he's gonna be shy. They're gonna give him about a two yards on that one. Yep. He'll be shy by about a yard. At least a yard, but yeah, once again, another fourth down situation, fourth and close and uh, definitely uh, striking distance into the end zone. We mentioned how these two guys are very close in yards this year. Roberts at 1,140 and Stone 1,104. And then a big pile up at the middle. Hobbs is pointing like they got a fumble recovery here. The ball was tried to be handed off up the middle. Hobbs is jumping up and down, pointing the other way, but we still don't have a call yet. And maybe they're saying that maybe he didn't get the first down. It was a fourth and short. Still waiting for the official signal. Thought it might have been a fumble, but I think it's more that Hobbs thinks they didn't make it. Maybe a knee went down. Oh. No, they did. Yep, they did give it. And they're going to get the clock restart again. A one-yard pickup for Stone. 
will move the chains again. That's the sixth first down for the Wildcats. Making that clock run, and that will run out the clock here in the first quarter. So we got a major battle going on as Clovis is knocking at the door in the Hobbs Eagle red zone with a first and goal from the, make it the eight yard line. Hobbs up eight to nothing. We'll be back in 30 seconds here on Cool 95.7, HobbsAmerica.com, YouTube, and the Cool 95.7 Facebook page. Hobbs Eagles lead eight to nothing as we get ready for the second quarter over the Clovis Wildcats. First round of the 6A playoffs. We'd like to thank our sponsors of Hobbs Eagle playoff football this season. I'd like to thank IPS, Lee County State Bank, TDS, Forest Tire, R360, Norley Hospital, Lasco Construction, and RMS Foods. Thank you very much. Of course, we'll keep those sponsors the rest of the playoff schedule. We got about seven or more that we'll talk about throughout the rest of this ball game. Of course, Eagles trying to punch their ticket to the quarterfinal round next week at Cleveland, the number one seed. Four teams have buys this week because of their finish in the regular season. Of course, Cleveland and La Cueva been one and two for much of the season. Centennial from the Hobbs Eagle District moves up to that third slot, and then they got a real good uh, break there. Volcano Vista picks up the number four because this Clovis team beat Los Lunas last week, who was right. undefeated in district until that game. Exactly, but you also got to wonder how La Cueva would have done if they had uh, not lost that first game by forfeit. Would they have been number one? Who knows? Yeah, they had an ineligible player at the uh, first game of the season. We're ready for the second quarter. The Whitecap is trying to stop the Hobbs Eagle band from playing here as he's turning around looking up at the Watson Stadium bleachers now. Waved his arms up there and he wants some quiet for Clovis to run a play. They have a first and goal from the Eagle eight yard line. Of course, Hobbs up eight to nothing here. In case you missed the early part of the game, it was a 37-yard pass from Callaway to Rodriguez oh, and, and a two-point conversion for Cameron Hernandez to make it 8-0. Yeah, there was a penalty on that one as well against the Wildcats. They knocked him back five. Yeah, the referee on the far sideline, the head linesman kind of quietly jogged over, so that will be the fourth penalty for 20 yards total. They're going to be pitching around the left end, heading strong outside of the 10, and coming down at the 9-yard line. Not much uh, forward ahead for Kyrie Phillips as he was strung down from behind. Carlos Jimenez is the one who brought him down for the Hobbs Eagles. And we've been uh, mentioning his name quite a bit the last few weeks. Great uh, cornerback out there. Likes to stick with the receivers on long balls, but he'll come up and make a tackle too. Yeah, that was definitely needed. It did save a possible touchdown. Looked like he had a lane that was opening up for the Clovis Wildcat. Actually lost a yard on that one. That's the second carry for Phillips for two total now. Second down and goal down from the nine yard line. Eagles are gonna load up five in the box. Double slot receiver, or one back is Roberts, one receiver right. Give it to Roberts up the gut through the gap there as he throws his body forward. Trying to get out to at least the five yard line. Looks like he got four back as he continues to knock on the red zone here of the Hobbs Eagles. Yeah, Hill and Johnson, part of that uh, tackle for the Hobbs Eagles as it brought him down, like you said, just a couple of yards forward from the original line. 21 yards on the ground for Roberts so far. He's got 11 carries, so he definitely is their workhorse in terms of rushes this season. This team is predominant run game, a majority run game, we should say. 2,594 yards on the ground out of 3,145 total. They've only thrown 551 yards in the air. That's only 55 yards of passing average out per game. Got split formation backfield. Stone has three in the backfield spread across. He's underneath the center. Stone taking a long count here. Fakes the hand off up the middle, rolls right, wants to throw on his back foot to the corner right end zone to nobody. Ooh. Almost hits the Hobbs Eagle wind tunnel in the back of the end zone. But the receivers were all stuck up with the Hobbs Eagle defense. Five yards of gap to the back of the end zone, overthrowing his receiver, Zachira Martinez. And no chance for a catch on that one. No, not even close. I mean, he uh, felt the pressure and uh, just threw the ball. It was uh, more or less to save him his own bacon, basically, and also to save it from being a uh, loss in the play. But yeah, wasn't even even if he got near somebody, it would have been way out of bounds. So totally uh, a bad throw altogether. And now looks like they're going to go for a field goal. Stone is only past 30. Uh was it see 36 percent this season in the air so that's not a very good percentage cash is going to be the one roberts the one to kick the uh, field goal this is going to be a 13 23 yarder it's off to the right no good a low 
Lions shot two. Almost got a block by the Eagles on that one, so no pay dirt there for the Wildcats. The passing game did not open up the way they wanted to. They will try to get to that corner of the end zone. Just didn't work before that, so the Hobbs Eagles get it back on downs. You know, this also reminds me of the fact that when Hobbs stopped Rio Rancho a couple of times at the end zone, but yeah, that was definitely a kick that looked like it was a line drive and didn't get anywhere near the uprights for the uh, for that field goal. Yeah, wicked turn to the right of the uh, right, cro uh, right uh, up bar there. And that will be moved up to the 20 because it goes out of the end zone. It's automatic touchback. So Hobbs will have it middle of the field at the 20-yard line, leading 8 to nothing here in the second quarter. Hobbs will send a pair of receivers right and left. Shotgun for Callaway. He's going to move some receivers around now. They're going to have four stacking up on the right side, just one on the left. That will be Hawkes. They throw the screen to the right side, caught at the 15 to the 20, down to the 23. That'll be about a four-yard pickup. That yeah, didn't quite work out for him as Saul Armadera's took that one and uh, just made a couple of yards on that play. Yeah, they're going to give him about three instead. That will be his first catch of the ball game. He's a predominant runner for the Eagles. That's three for three for Callaway in the throwing game so far for a total of 56 yards. Second down and seven now for the Eagles at their own 23-yard line, leading eight to nothing here early in the second. Trips left, receiver right. Callaway back in shotgun. It has Armadaris right behind him. Two-step drop for Callaway. Pump fake. Cuts up the middle with the run to the 25. Angle right to the 30 outside the hash. And he will get the first down. He's going to get, looks like, eight, maybe nine yards on that one. So Callaway's first rush of the ball game. Hobbs has only had two runs of this contest for 11 yards. Again, they have the score, 8 nothing. Exactly. And they're playing well-balanced, as we talked about in the pregame. And uh, they're definitely moving the ball down the field so far in this second drive. Second first down for the Eagles as well. Stack receivers two left, two to the right as well. Both stack sets. Callaway back in shotgun with Armadaris. He's going to throw the screen to the right side to Hawkins to the 30. 35 up the sideline and stumble steps out to the 40. I think he stepped out before that. We'll see where they're going to mark it over here on the far right sideline in front of Clovis. Yeah, may have gotten four on that one again. Ran out of uh, real estate otherwise. Could have probably gotten the first down off of that pass. They do give him four, as you said. You got good eyes up there, Ron. Better than me right now. <laughs> uh, second catch for 20 now for Hawkins total. Again, Callaway perfect, four for four. Hurry up offense now. Second down and six from the 37-yard line. Still in Eagle territory. Twins left and right. We'll bring a man in motion from right to left as Hawk is. He'll make a trips left now. Shotgun to Callaway. Hand off up the middle to Armadera. Slide through tacklers, 40, 45, 50. Into Columbus territory at the 46-yard line. He had two to beat on that one, just could not quite get past that defender, but did a really good job getting in the secondary. That was Cash Roberts, actually, that stopped him from gaining more yardage. So Armadaris getting about 17 on that one. Two carries for 20 yards, the third Hobbs Eagle first down in Clovis territory now at the 46. So Hobbs starting to knock on the door again. They want to put some more points, some insurance points on the scoreboard, up eight to nothing. 8.25 left, second quarter. Twins right, receiver left. Callaway taking his time to make sure everybody gets set at the receiving core. They'll bring a man in motion from right to left. And Franklin now on the left, the Twins. He catches the pass on the screen left side, puts his head down, drags a few Clovis Wildcats with him across the 45, and he gets drugged back. The ball came loose, but he was called dead. So he'll get a couple two on the uh, forward progress that time. Exactly, yeah. Actually, that might not. Let's see, that was Black that had that one, so he's going to get two. That'll be another five for five now for Callaway. Perfect in the passing game. Two catches for Jaquez, one for Rodriguez, a touchdown. Black and Armadares both getting a one apiece. Kind of short stuff for a lot of these guys, except for Rodriguez, 37-yard touchdown, and the 16-yard to Jaquez earlier. Second down and eight now from the 44. Twins right and left. Delay hand up up the middle. Hooker's up. Armadares, 40, 35, 30, 25, 20, 15, oh. 10, five to the left side of the end zone. Touchdown. And that's going to be a 44-yard rush for Saul Armadares for the score. Eagles on the board once again. And we have seen that as Eagle fans where he can take it up the middle, break it open, get in the secondary, and just flat out run, outrun everybody into the end zone. And uh, that's exactly what he did. Of course, he had 100, over 100 yards, 126, I believe, against Clovis the first week of the season as the Eagles winning 44-13 to 13 in that one. And this one again for 44 yards and a touchdown. Waiting for the PAT. They're going to go with the conventional kick this time as Beatty steps up. Last one ended up in a two-point conversion. A little curve to that one. Goes inside the left upright and good. With 7.29 remaining, second quarter, your Hobbs Eagles extend the lead over Clovis. 15 to nothing. First round of the 6A playoffs. 
live on the Hot Single Network, back in 30. Seven twenty-nine left, second quarter. Eagles extend the lead to fifteen to nothing, thanks to a forty-four-yard touchdown run for Armanderas, his first score of the game. Coupled with that pass to Rodriguez in the first quarter, Hobbs blanking the Wildcats, coming off a four-game win streak in district. The district champs knocking off Los Lunas last week, but the Hobbs Eagles want to tell everybody they are ready to play Cleveland next week. They got to get the the game out of the way here first at Watson Stadium, but they don't want to look back at this game. They want to keep moving forward. 15 points is great, but they want to add to that. Exactly. I mean, we've seen this. Even Clovis has had a big lead, 49 points to 20, and they've lost the game. End over end kick from Taylor. Over the shoulder, two Clovis guys run into each other, helmet to helmet at the 32. One of them comes down with it. I can't believe he's actually holding the football after that play. And that was a Max Roche, a sophomore. He's a big kid too, six foot four, 215 pounds. He went face mask to face mask with his teammate that time. And they, boy, they clanked the iron. That was Elias Lira that was with him. And they're just lucky they didn't have a fumble for the Hobbs Eagles to take into the end zone for about 30-some yards. Or an injury. I mean, you know, you definitely don't want to start your uh, drive off with an injury or a bad play. And that could have gone south real quick for the uh, Wildcats as they would have lost a couple of guys. They don't have anybody really extra to spare. That kick was near the Hobbs Eagles sideline on the right. Clovis is going from left to right on the radio dial. They'll have it first and 10 from their 33-yard line, trailing 15 to nothing to the Eagles. Of course, these two teams are a little bit of a different situation. The Eagles have been in the playoffs the last three years in a row, so they're definitely on a good streak here, and Clovis is trying to get themselves to the next round. A better man in motion from right to left, getting a flip-out pitch to the left side around the 30 to the possibly line of scrimmage. I don't think he's going to get out there, though. He's brought down in the backfield, far left sideline. And I'm not sure who that, they had a number 30 listed at that time. I don't see him on the uh, roster. We'll have to double check to see who that was. A little flip out to the left side. Yeah, you know, uh, part of the reason why this is such a big game is because Clovis owns the uh, Hobbs Eagles as far as the uh, district or the record. They have more wins than Hobbs and uh, Hobbs has only won like the last three in a row. They've only done that uh, one other time in their uh, series history. Yeah, definitely in the pocket of Clovis in terms of the record this season or the last seasons, 13 wins and 44 losses for the Eagles in the series against Clovis, so they definitely win that game. Pitch out to the left side, up the sideline to the 50, 45, into Hobbs Eagle territory, a big run, and that'll be a first down pick up and then some. Looks like 24 yards for Clovis on a little pitch. Diaz Castro was the one that was able to bring him down finally, but we noticed that Stone really has a lot of speed and uh, he is definitely utilizing it in this uh, first half. 24 yards for Stone. He has had a total of four double-digit carries so far. Seventh first down for the Wildcats, but they have not been able to put anything on the scoreboard, Ron. He stayed in bounds. Clock runs at 6.15 left second quarter. Eagles still up 15-0. Exactly. You can run up and down the field all you want to, but the final thing is, what's the score? First and 10 for the Eagle, 45. They have a double slot look. Hand the ball off around the left end to Cash Roberts to the 40, gets to the sidelines, gets spun around, and uh, backpedals his way to the 35. That's close to that first down marker, that extra push there. I think he might have just barely got his butt across that first down marker. It looks like it is very close, and from the spot, it will be possibly a first down. Yep, they're yes. gonna move the chains. That's the eighth first down for the Wildcats, two in this series. In fact, in the last game, the uh, Clovis Wildcats got one more first down that Hobbs did, but again, did not win in the scorebook side. 46 yards on the ground for Roberts so far. He has got 13 carries at this point. First and 10 from the Eagle, 35 on the left hash. 5.30 left in the half. Hobbs up 15 to nothing, very fast moving first half of play. Double slot, back man is Roberts. Fake the football to him, give it to Jones, who keeps it, I should say. He spins around to the 30, quarterback keeper outside the left hash, and goes down after about six yard pickup. He broke about two tackles on one before he finally was brought down. He uh, gained about three or four more yards after that first initial tackle. Luckily, defensive lineman Eagle, big man coming up there to make the big wallop on him. That was Oliver Hill. 
the senior DT. That's an eight yard pickup on that one. And we got a timeout on the field. We'll take the quick break here. 501 left, second quarter. Hobbs up 15 and nothing over Clovis. The 6A playoffs continue in 30 seconds on the Hobbs Eagle Network. Time out on the field. We're coming back strong here as the Hobbs Eagles lead 15 to nothing with 5.01 left second quarter. Hobbs getting some touchdowns out of Rodriguez, a 37-yard pass from Owen Calloway. Armanderas, a 44-yard run for a touchdown here in the second quarter. But Clovis moving the football on a second down and two from the Hobbs Eagle 27-yard line. They need to get two yards for a first down at the 25 over on the left hash. Late sub trying to get on the field, coming and running in the backfield and back to the left side, doesn't know where he's supposed to go. That's Kyrie Phillips. Hobbs trying to get themselves adjusted on defense. Big shift now on the front line. They got five on the front there for the black and gold. Twins left, slot left. They're gonna bid the fake handoff, take it by the up the middle by the quarterback, Stone. He didn't know who he's gonna hand it off to. He had two guys kind of crisscrossing in the backfield. He's gonna go down for a loss quickly. Exactly. and. Uh not sure exactly, you know, it looked at first that uh, Hobbs was a little confused, but in the end it looked like Clovis didn't know exactly what to do. They had uh, two running backs back there, didn't hand off to either one of them, tried to get it up there and uh, did not gain any yardage in that run. Zakaya Wad, the defensive tackle for the Hobbs Eagles there, forcing and actually giving him a one yard loss for Stone. Brings up a third down at about two and a half for the Wildcats at the Eagle 27 yard line. Can you get to the 25, man in motion right to left. And Stone's gonna get met in the backfield, was gonna option it to the left side, but he's met with a bear hug. He's gonna lose another couple of yards. Cameron Hernandez, once again, providing some hello there. You know, how you doing action with the quarterback, giving him a loss as well, and uh, making sure that nothing happens offensively for the Wildcats. Two losses for Stone in a row for minus three, back of the 30 now, gotta get five yards of the 25. They keep moving backwards because of the Hobbs Eagle pressure coming up the gut. With 3.50 left, the clock is not to their advantage for the Wildcats, who trail 15 to nothing here in the second quarter. Couple receivers head right, a slot right too. As in the backfield now is Stone ready for shotgun. He has a man in motion, back to pass, three-step drop, and he's dropped in the backfield. The Hobbs Eagles get him hard for a 10-yard loss. Big man linebacker for the Hobbs Eagles in there, Cameron Hernandez again, minus 10 on that play, and the Eagles will get the ball back. Exactly, and we talked about that in the pregame as far as you know, disrupting the play, being, making sure that the uh, rhythm is off on it. In fact, actually, that was a first. That's actually a turnover of downs. It looks like it's going to be over to the Hobbs Eagles. Yeah, that's, that was a fourth down situation. So two turnover on downs and a punt for the Wildcats. No points on the scoreboard. And the Hobbs Eagles now in offensive mode from their own 40, leading 15 to nothing. 338 remaining here in the second. Wooden Coach Stevens love to add some more points on that scoreboard. Exactly. Plus, this is the reason why Hobbs didn't have a whole lot of yards last week. They were getting great field position. Hobbs gets everybody set. They're going to run two guys from the backfield over to the left side to make it trips left in the receiving core. Two on the right. Hawk is in motion right to left. Give the ball to him. Cuts it back up the middle. 40 back angles left. and gets somersaulted across the 40-yard line. Hit hard by the Clovis Wildcats. And taking him hard was Mac, Max Roshi. They're going to give him a one-yard pickup on the forward progress for that uh, man in motion, Mr. Hawk is. Yeah. Hawk has tried to get behind his uh, blockers, but the Wildcats did not uh, cut him off. And so he only gained a small amount of yards, about two, no, actually just one. 73 yards on the ground so far for the Hobbs Eagles. Three of those rushes by Armadaris, and he has got 66 of those numbers. Second down to nine for the Eagles at their own 41 on the left hash. Three minutes left in the half and running here. Trips right, no re one receiver left. Back to pass, Callaway, three-step drop, stays pocket, now flushed right, he's gonna let it go. Over to the corner route, the ball swatted in the air, caught at the 30 by Hawkes. 20, 15 off the deflection, 10, five, and runs into the end zone for the touchdown. 
deflects it in the air. That will be a 60-yard reception. The defender tipped the ball up and paid the price. Another big play by Hobbs and another gain as far as getting another score. Yeah, that was all Hawkeyes. Once he was able to get the ball, he was able to outpower the uh, defender and run it in for the score. 60 yards for Hawkeyes. That was a, a pass blatted up in the air. Hawkeyes came down with it, had a great state of mind to keep his eyes on the football and not just give up and say, oh, that's going to be knocked away. Makes a catch and goes in for it. Hobbs going to get the kick ready here for the PAT. As coming up is Beatty. Black will be the holder for Hobbs, who now leads 21 to nothing here in the first half. And Clovis does not like the outcome of this game so far. Here's the kick up, and it is good. 2.42 left here in the second. Hobbs with a big wallop over Clovis. 21 to nothing. We'll take a 30 second break and come back live on the Hobbs Eagle Network. at Watson Stadium. Ty friend Ron Gunner, Tiffany Stuber with you tonight. Your Hobbs Eagles first round of the 6A football playoffs here at Watson, leading 22 to nothing. Coming off a big 60-yard pass play from Callaway to Hawkins off a deflection by the Clovis defender. Thanks to our sponsors of Hobbs Eagle playoff action this year, Thriftway Grocery, Robinson and Associates, Eunice Puppet Supply, Hobbs Rental, Albertson's Market, Outlaw Grill, and XL Energy. Big supporters of the Hobbs Eagles who are winning 22 to nothing over Clovis. Here's the kick from Taylor. It's going to be a sidewinder. Caught at the 26 on the right hash. Brought up the middle to the 30, to the 33, and then brought down hard. He's, no, he's going to continue for a few more yards. Looked like he got stood up straight, but he continued to put his body forward. And the return man looks like he might have come up hurt, too, was Max Roshi yep. at the 35. He's flat on his back right now and uh, trying to get his teammates to kind of pull him off the turf. I think he may have gotten the wind knocked out of him, too. That's possible because he could have landed on the ball. Either way, it did take him a moment, but he is going to be able to walk off on his own power. If you could put one thing, uh, put, point your finger on one thing the Eagles have done the, the superbly tonight, what would you say it was? I'd say their passing game. They've been uh, struggling with the pass, trying to get connection. This time around, they've been hitting every single pass, and that has helped. Plus, they've been doing it in stride. That means they've had two scores because of that reason. Well, that last one was a lucky play, though. The defender knocked the ball in the air. But, you know, there's a guy that you call uh, Mr. Hawkes who's always where he needs to be. First and ten for the Wildcats at their own 35-yard line. Trailing 22 zip to the Eagles. Twins right. Matt in motion going to the left side. They're going to take the option. Stone will tuck it and go instead up the middle. The quarterback to break the tackle. 45-50 to Hobbs territory to the 40. Breaks another one. 35-30. Far sideline. 25-20. 15-10-5. Touchdown. The breakaway run for Stone, the quarterback. Started at the 36 into the end zone. That's going to be a total of 66 yards on the score, and the Hobbs Eagles just could not get him wrapped up. They do have a man down at the 30 for Clovis. Yeah, that was one of those situations where it was not uh, it was not tackled at the at the bottom. It was tackled at the top. They were trying to get him down, but he is very elusive. He just wiggled out of all those uh, uh, tackles, and instead, uh, although they do have a man down, like you said, they, this may be more hurting than it is helpful although the uh, touchdown is a nice touch. 64 yards for the touchdown, breaking about two or three tackles on that uh, play up around the middle there for Stone, the quarterback. That's his first TD of the ball game, first score for Clovis. And one of the blockers back at the 30 going in on the left hash is flat on his back as about five teammates wrapped around him here at this point. Clock stop with 2.17 left here in the second. 22 to six, your score, as we wait for to see what the result of this injury is gonna be. Both teams came in with a 5-5 five five record. Hobbs has won their last three ball games up to this point, 3-0 and o against you know, Alamogordo, and of course they beat Oregon Mountain in the last game, Carlsbad. This uh, Clovis team with their 4-0 record in district, definitely the biggest win of their season against Los Lunas uh, this past week for the district championship. And looks like they're helping off the uh, Clovis Wildcat injured player right now. And looks like he's needing a lot of help, uh, kind of dragging his feet from behind. Thought I saw number 80 out there, Zachariah Martinez. You did. And that is the guy that I believe they're taking off to the far left Clovis sideline. They're going to have a PAT upcoming with 217 remaining. 
as the uh, purple and white back out of the field for that chance to score. Now they did get a two point conversion score on them by the Eagles in the first quarter. They might want to try to get that back right now. Uh, would make it uh, 22 to eight, which would make it a 14 point deficit. So we might want to possibly be are, waiting for that. But they're lining up for a PAT. Looks like it will be their running back that'll be kicking again, Cash. Roberts, <laughs> keep forgetting that's not his last name. And kind of a low snap, kick is up, Sidewinder is up and good. 2.17 left here in the first half. Clovis gets on the scoreboard. They trail the Eagles, though, 22 to seven. We'll be back in 30 seconds live with more Hobbs Eagle playoff football. Twenty-two to seven, your score. Your Hobbs Eagles leading over Clovis. Second game of the season. Of course, the Hobbs Eagles winning the first one, forty-one to thirteen, to start the season. Hobbs had three passing and three running touchdowns in that ball game. Clovis with only one pass and one rush for a touchdown in that one. A uh, pretty big game back then. Uh, quite a few weeks ago, Saul Armadaris had thirteen carries, one hundred and twenty-six yards in that game. Definitely a big one for him. Uh, uh, Jeremiah Hawkes had six catches, 104 yards in that contest, a couple of touchdowns. And, of course, we saw one from uh, Mr. Hawkes just a few minutes ago after deflection. He rambled into the end zone and scored for the Eagles earlier. Yeah, plus uh, Stone was only held to 56 yards rushing on that game. Roberts was held to 75 on, this, on that one as well. So you know their numbers have already been blown up big time. We were hoping to hold them to uh, under 100, but uh, – doesn't seem that's going to happen. Yeah, both of them over 1,100 yards rushing on the season. Definitely a running team, the Clovis Wildcats. Getting ready to kick off on the 40. Eagles probably going to be thinking about an onside kick here because Clovis would like to score before the half ends. Again, Roberts will kick off from the 40. And he's going to keep it on a bouncer across the 40. The Eagles, it slides on the ground. It's knocked down hard. And coming up over the top of it for the Eagles and doing a good job of covering it up so we didn't get by him. Uh, Gabe Henry, the defensive end and also special teams man, just a sophomore. A couple of guys, uh, the younger underclassmen, get some time this season. There's a lot of young guys on this team, and that looks pretty decent when you have a playoff team hosting a home game here, first round of the playoffs, and we got a couple more years in jerseys for them. Exactly, and both sides have young players that are happening. In fact, some of these players didn't even play in the first game. First down and 10 for the Eagles. Hurry up offense from the 34. Callaway with the flip up the middle to Hawkins to the 40, 45, 50. He's in a Clovis territory, 40, 35, and right out of bounds about the 34-yard line. Little flick across the middle of the field on a pitch that time in the gap, and Hawkins was there for it. And it worked because Clovis did not have a single answer to that one. He got into the secondary and was able to break it free Almost ran all the way. Looked like it was going to be another touchdown for the Hobbs Eagles. 32 yards for Hawkes. Two carries for 33 total. Fourth first down for the Eagles. They love to put another score on the board. They got a two-minute warning situation to work with, although we don't stop for two in the high school ranks. Trips left, receiver right. Callaway and shotgun back with Armadaris. They pull out of the play call and look over to Coach Stevens on the sideline. Hobbs going right to left on the radio dial, leading 22 to seven. Two minutes left in the half. Trips left, receiver right. Taking a long snap count here. Bring him out of motion. Hawkes right to left. Give him the ball again around the end. He tries to hurdle one player to the 35. Cuts it up. Near sideline 30. Going to the 25 and runs out of bounds. That kid will not stop. Already has a pass reception for a touchdown. He's close to a first down on this one. Looks like they're to give him about nine and a half, ten yards. He might have the first. He did get the first. So ten yards for Hawkes. That is his third carry in this ball game. He has 43 yards. So averaging over 10 plus a carry and the fifth first down for the Eagles. They'll have it at the Clovis 24 on the left hash. Clovis learning the hard way that you gotta wrap him up. You can't just hit him and knock him out and see if you can knock him down. He will take that and go, and he did for 10 more yards. They have to watch the video on him. He does go in motion, gets a little flick, and he goes around the end. That's pretty much his, his bread and butter. First and 10 for the 24. They bring him out in motion the other way, left to right, trips right now. Hand off up the middle to Armadaris, and he dives ahead across the 20. He's going to get a small yards here. Looks like he's got about three. They're going to give him right to the 20-yard line. Yeah. Armadaris has three carries now for 67 yards. Or make it four carries for 67. So he's over 10-plus a pop. 
133 remaining. Hobbs would like to score, but they want to make sure the clock gets down close to zero so it doesn't give Corbis another chance for a possession. Second down and seven. Callaway going to tuck it, go up the left side. Gap to the 20, 15, 10, and is brought down around the seven yard line. Started at the 20, gets to the seven, a 13 yard pickup for the quarterback. And that was another nice run up the middle and uh, definitely earned his, uh, earned his points on that one as uh, another first down, first and goal. Yep, that'll be the sixth first down for the Eagles. And they'll have it at, looks like the seven yard line on the left hash, twins left, twins right. Callaway's gonna bring a man in motion from left to right. That's uh, Franklin, the handoff left side, and there goes Urban Darius into the end zone for the touchdown on the angle left as he scores from seven yards out for the touchdown. The Eagles back up on the scoreboard. He wasn't even touched barely as he got the ball, and before you know it, he was already into the end zone. He was, he's a quick guy, we already knew that, and he definitely proved it on that play. Seven yard run for Hawkins, or excuse me, Armadaris. Don't want to give away the wrong player there. <laughs> right. That's Armadaris' second touchdown of the ball game as we wait the PAT from Beatty. A little bit of delay here as Black getting a good snap. The kick is up, and the kick is good. And we got 49 seconds remaining here in the second. Clovis will get one more possession, but they trail the Eagles 29 to seven. You're listening to 6A Playoff Football live on the Hobbs Eagle Network back in 30. Hobbs Eagles up 29 to seven here as Hobbs has scored three times in this second quarter. Armadares with a couple of touchdowns and Hawkes getting a long pass off of deflection. Hobbs starting to roll, although Clovis did score once in this quarter, a 64 yard run. Yeah, but nice here stone. we go once again as the Eagles will get to kick off as doing the chore for the Eagles, a sophomore stepping up the last couple of weeks for the Hobbs cause. And that is Jaden Taylor. The kick is going to go towards the middle, and there's going to be a return to the 20 across the 25 and backpedaling to the 30-yard line, and that's really the wrap-up for the Hobbs Eagles as Phillips will be the return man for the purple and white as he is brought down by the linebacking core, stepping up Gustavo Diaz-Castro, bottom of the pile there. So Clovis with the one last hurrah here in the second quarter, 42 seconds. Definitely gonna have to use their sidelines if they even try to throw in this game. Uh, not very much so far. Uh, so far, uh, the passing game 0 for 2 uh, for Stone, but Stone doing a lot of rushing, including that 64-yard touchdown where he broke off what about three tacklers by the Hobbs Eagle defense. Well, both sides have all their timeouts, so they may utilize them, or they may just go into halftime to see if they can do what they can do in the second half. First down and 10 from the 30 for the Wildcats on the left hash. They send two receivers right, double slot. Gonna go with the handoff, and the ball is going to be right up to the, mid, on the line of scrimmage. I don't think uh, Roberts is able to even get to the line. He was dropped in the backfield. He's gonna lose two. No, they're gonna go ahead and give him the uh, forward progress and get him on the line somewhere, somehow. I don't know how that happened. At the I know. Point of the football, barely no gain on the play there for Roberts. He has been stopped a couple of times at the line of scrimmage and was dropped in the backfield twice, minus eight and minus two. But he's had uh, several different double-digit runs, an 11-yarder, 15-yarder, 10-yarder in this first half, but uh, has yet to score a touchdown for the Wildcats. Second down and 10 now from the 30. Clock down to three seconds on the clock. And they're going to get the handoff around the left end to Roberts. 30, 35, and he's dropped down at the 35 for a five-yard pickup. That will end the first half of action. So your Hobbs Eagles with a big lead here at the half. 22-point lead, third, or 29 to seven. Eagles leading Clovis here in the 6A first round of the playoffs at Watson Stadium. We'll take a three minute break, come back with the numbers for the first half of action. You're listening to Playoff Football at HobbsAmerica.com, YouTube, and the Cool 95.7 Facebook page on the internet, plus on the radio at Cool 95.7.
We're back here at Watson Stadium as your Hobbs Eagles on a romp over Clovis. First round of the 6A playoffs, 29 to 7. And looking at the numbers in the first half, first of all, the scoring. Hobbs started off in the first quarter with one touchdown, a 37-yard pass from Callaway to Rodriguez, plus a two-point conversion to Cameron Hernandez, a linebacker playing receiver on that play, <laughs> made it 8-0 early. Hobbs added two more touchdowns to start off the second quarter. Armadaris, uh, the runner, getting a 44-yard rush for a touchdown to put it to 15 to nothing at the 7:29 mark of the second. Then a 60-yard pass to Hawk as a deflection off a Clovis defender, uh, making it 22 to nothing with the 242 mark. Clovis did manage to get a score, a 64-yard run from Stone, their quarterback, made it 22 to seven with about 212 remaining, and then under a minute left in the first half, 49 seconds to be exact, a seven-yard run for Armandaris, uh, making his second rushing touchdown of the ball game, 29 to seven to end the first half of action. So Eagles with a three to one touchdown count just in that second quarter alone. Kind of a slow start, kind of what we saw last week in the first quarter with Carlsbad. Nobody put any points on the scoreboard, but again, when you get Hobbs mad, uh, they're going to get you in the red zone. They're going to keep moving that into the score, and they uh, got a lot of guys involved on those plays. Yeah, plus, you know, you always expect to see a little more action from the defense to start it off while the offense is trying to figure out exactly what they want to do, where the rhythm is going to be. And uh, for Clovis, we already knew what their rhythm was going to be, whether it be Stone or Cash, uh, Ro Roberts, whether he was going to run or one of those, those two were going to run, definitely. And uh, they were going to definitely use that option. They have been doing so with some uh, somewhat success. They've been moving the ball down the field, but they have not been able to get the uh, final score. They've done it once, but that was because of a big run. Otherwise, they have not been able to uh, do what they want to, get the ball down the field and score. They've just been able to get the ball down the field. So Clovis probably going to do some uh, adjustments, although I'm not sure exactly what it would be other than maybe they're going to employ a little bit more of the pass. So far, I don't believe they've gotten any passes at all to connect. The uh, couple of them that they did have been so far off that they have not even been close to looking like they're going to be a completion. So, yeah, Hobbs just needs to continue to stay where they're at, play at all facets of the game. Clovis, on the other hand, is having trouble doing that. They just have that one-sided, uh, you know, offense, and that is not helping them right now to uh, get into this game. You mentioned the, the passing efficiency definitely hasn't been there this season. In fact, Stone, the quarterback, has only completed 36% of his passes and the team itself at 551 yards. And uh, averaging in terms of the season in the uh, passing game, just about 55 yards a game. So that uh, definitely is not part of their, their whole scheme in terms of the offense. And like you said, there's been no passes completed in this game, 0 for 2 so far for Stone. Uh, he threw one for a long route, uh, about a 30, 40 yard play that uh, wide open receiver. I think right. he looked inside and outside. The ball kind of zigzagged on him in the air a little bit and was wide open, but beat the Hobbs Eagles secondary. Ball was overthrown. Then they tried to throw one in the end zone on the other end uh, to the right corner, but the receiver caught in traffic about, about five yards of the end zone just sitting there and the ball overthrown to the back of the end zone. So again, those two passes nowhere close, but again, we know the offense is gonna be the running game. And so far, Stone has shown he can run the football pretty tough. He's the quarterback, 14 carries, 133 yards, the only Clovis touchdown for 64. He's also had some other big runs, 24, 13, 12, and 12. So right there, you've got five rushes that have been for double digits, including the 60 plus. So he's a guy that you cannot you know, reach out with your hands and grab a jersey. I mean, he's got the, right. the plow past you, and he's going to keep turning, and we paid the price on that rushing touchdown for him as people were just sliding off of it. Yeah, it looked like he was a pinball right there as he was bouncing off of uh, defenders. Unfortunately, like you said, and uh, as we've all said, you know, you do not tackle from the top. You tackle from the bottom. You cannot run if your legs are wrapped up, and that's what they need to do. They need to wrap up his legs and be able to stop him. They cannot stop him from the top. All he has to do is shimmy and shake, and he can just – move forward and get more yards like he's been doing so far tonight. Now his teammate, uh, uh, Cash Roberts, has more yards for him this season, of over 1,100 versus uh, Stone, about 100 or so more. But right. uh, Roberts only has 51 yards so far on 15 carries, hasn't scored yet, and doesn't have a lot of double-digit runs, just 3, 15, 11, and 10. So not the big night for him that he's expecting. Of course, these, both these guys average over 100 yards a game. So uh, they're definitely some of the best backs uh, quarterback slash running backs in the state. Well, runners right? anyway. Yeah, runners, period. So other than that, those two guys, they had one guy, uh, Conley had a one carry for 
for three, and then he handed off to Royal for zero on one carry. So it's pretty much been the, the Stone and Roberts show as expected. 31 total handoffs, 187 yards rushing. That's the complete offense. No pass yards in this first half. Four penalties for 20 yards. Uh, Clovis' turnover on downs twice. Um, also missed a field goal and had a punt in this ball game, so that didn't help their cause either. And eight first downs, you already mentioned this, consistent movement of the football, but no payoff at the end, which kind of deflates your team's emotions. At half, though, I'm sure Coach McCraw is going to try to fire them up and say, hey, that one touchdown that we scored, people were pretty excited. They did get an injury out of that, unfortunately, but uh, right. still that kind of got the team pumped up, and at least the crowd was a little bit more uh, boisterous on that other side over there on the visitor and side. And they also had a short field goal attempt that just did not go anywhere as far as getting over the bar. And so, you know, that's uh, three points that they left on the field as well as uh, possibly another seven points that they had with that uh, nice little pass that you said that was uh, to nobody to nowhere except for out of bounds about five yards out of bounds to be exact. Yeah, quarterback threw off his back foot. He wasn't set, uh, and he just didn't, he let it air out too much, and unfortunately they didn't get the score, and at rushed, least for the Wildcats. Yeah. Let's look at the Hobbs Eagles numbers in the first half. Uh, they've had a total of 10 carries so far in this game. The leader in yards is Armadaris, as expected. Five carries for 74 yards, two of those for touchdowns, a 44-yarder and a 7-yarder. He also added a 17-yard rush earlier in the game as well. So he is the leader, as expected. He needs 47. He already has 47. He's right. reversed those digits to 74. He has over 1,000 yards this season. Right. Excellent showing so far for Armanderas. And, you know, we were talking earlier about the fact that, you know, we had a, our, I had a feeling I actually didn't talk about it, but uh, we should have as far as Hobbs usually likes to open up with the uh, short pass to be able to uh, chip down the field. And then what happens is, is Clovis gets so used to that, it opens up the long pass, and that's what the Hobbs has been doing the last couple of plays, has been able to score off of those, and that helps a lot. You get the short pass going, you get the uh, off or the defense kind of set for that, and then once you do that, then you hit them with the long play and uh, just uh, leave them out in the open where your wide receiver or your, tel or your tight end, whoever it is that you're throwing it to, is going to be wide open. And, uh, yeah, just uh, as long as he can hit it in stride, get it in, or as you said, bounce it off a player and be able to get it in luckily. Either way, they can get in that score and uh, make it look rather easy. It's uh, just like that last play where – Hobbs answered back the seven that uh, Clovis gave. We were talking about Armadares right before that. And of course, uh, there's just that one touchdown or one touchdown run that he had, almost is the number he needed uh, for his 1,000 yards. He did 47. He got a 44 yarder for a score. So again, he's doing a great job so far. And in fact, he also caught a pass uh, for three yards to add to his numbers as well. Uh, Owen, or make that to uh, Hawkes. He's had three carries for 43, including a 32 yarder. Again, he lets it go in that motion, get the ball around the ends and move. And uh, they haven't read that right yet for Clovis. I'm sure they're talking about that here at halftime. Callaway with two carries for 21 yards, including a 13-yarder. Hobbs, 10 carries total in the first half, 138 yards on the ground so far on those two touchdowns from Armanderas. In the passing game, perfect so far uh, for Owen Callaway. He is 6 of 6 in the passing game. He's connected with Hawkes three times for 80. You mentioned the 60-yard deflected throw that he came up with and scored on. 16-yarder as well for Hawkes. Uh, Rodriguez had a touchdown to get the game moving with a 37-yarder for a score. Uh, Black has had one catch for two, and Armadaris one catch for three. So four different receivers that had receptions in the first half of action. Hobbs six of six for 122 yards in the air. A total of 260 in the offense compared to 187 for Clovis. Hobbs did manage one penalty in the game, a 15-yarder. Uh, that was a horse collar foul on the uh, Clovis sideline, far sideline of the game. And, uh, you know, that was an unfortunate one that really gave Clovis some good momentum into the red zone against the Eagles. Right. But, uh, again, that's sometimes those happen. But, boy, just one flag. I think the discussion over the, the week, last week almost 100 yards in penalties. Coach Stevens said enough was enough. You can't afford that in playoff games. And I think he got the point across. Exactly. Hobbs has been pretty consistent moving the ball to six first downs in the first half of action. So there you got it, 29-7. Uh, to 7. Ron, if you could put one key into the second half for Hobbs to continue with this big 22-point lead. What is the key for the victory in this playoff game? I think with everything else, it's going to have to be with defense. I think they need to slow down the run, if not stop it. They, Of course, with this Clovis uh, Wildcats, it's rather hard to stop it, but you can slow it down enough 
where they do not score. And I think as long as the defense is out there and playing what they've done in the first half, I think uh, uh, the Clovis Wildcats, because of the uh, fact that they're playing both sides of the field, I think uh, weariness, I think fatigue may set in a little bit for some of the players, and I think that's going to be a factor as well. So I think uh, the defense needs to stay where they're at, keep the momentum going, keep the fire high, and uh, they can be able to get this uh, win for the uh, Hobbs Eagles. I think in terms of the passing game for Hobbs, I know they like those little screen routes, the bubble routes out to the sidelines, and that does work quite a bit with Hawkeyes and some of those other guys on the outside. I like to see them extend those a little bit more intermediate routes to the sidelines, get some, some rollouts there, kind of get those cornerbacks that play both ways for Clovis. A lot of these guys do play both ways, a little bit more tired third and fourth quarters. Make them go down the field a little bit more, not just kind of wait on their flat feet, waiting to see if, you know, the, the receiver going to catch that screen pass. I'm not to say Stevens hasn't made some great calls right. in this first half, but I'd like to see some more exertion being put on there by Clovis. And, hey, they're right now being exerted by 22 points. Plus, you know, you also want to change it up a little bit. you got to make sure that the defense is never certain exactly what you're going to do. You're right about that. Instead of uh, doing it behind the uh, line of scrimmage, go ahead and do a uh, slant route where you're getting it up the middle, getting about six or seven yards each and every time, even if you get tackled after you get the catch, you still make forward progress. When you do it behind the line of scrimmage, there's that chance where it can be caught behind the line of scrimmage and you lose yards and you make it tougher to get those first downs. So you're right. I'd like to see a little bit of difference. You know, they probably will stick with uh, those uh, slot plays still, but I'm hoping for less of that and a little more uh, variance as far as their play selection. Once again, congratulations to Saul Armanderas, over 1,000 yards this season. Has done that by about 30 yards in the first half, hopefully extending that in the second. About a minute away as we bring the teams back on the field pretty quickly here, 29-7 to as your Hobbs Eagles leading over Clovis. As we go to the break, let me remind you about our Hobbs Eagles sponsors, IPS, also Lee County State Bank, also TDS, Forest Tire, R360, Norley Hospital, Lasco Construction, and RMS Foods. We'll be back in 60 seconds here on the Hobbs Eagle Network. Getting ready for second half action here at Watson Stadium. Ty friend Ron Gunner, Tiffany Stuber back at the station as your Hobbs Eagles lead 29 to seven. Both teams coming in at five and five into this playoff game. And were you kind of surprised that Clovis moved up so much in the uh, playoff seedings? Coming in at 13th in the Max Preps poll, Hobbs was at number seven before the before they got to the committee on Sunday. Ron, did you think Clovis was going to be up that high, having to you know play in that number uh, nine slot here at, in Hobbs? Uh, yeah, actually I did. I thought that it'd be nine or ten simply because they were district champions. If they hadn't have done that, of course, they probably wouldn't have gotten it at all. If, if not, they would have been the last seed. However, like you said before, they seed those uh, district champions pretty high, 
And I knew that they weren't going to get past Hobbs because Hobbs had beat them. And they also had a slightly better record as far as uh, strength of schedule. But in the end, I had a feeling, if anything, that they would be either ninth or tenth. And when they, when they got to the ninth spot and Hobbs was number eight, it pretty much sinked in. I thought, okay, that's, that's pretty much where we thought it would be. I was hoping for a seven so we could avoid uh, Cleveland. But on the other hand, you'd get less La Cueva, and La Cueva is probably unhappy with the fact that they're number two. So that's really not a better situation. So there was no good situation. There never really is a good situation unless you're the top four and a good team. So you just got to go with uh, the road you're taking. So, yeah, I, I was expecting possibly a, uh, either Farmington or Clovis would be uh, a possible opponent. So, no, I was not uh, surprised at all to see that uh, Clovis, in fact, I was rather happy because we have some uh, history with them. We need to get more wins against them to, to get a better history. And uh, this is a perfect night to do it so far in the first half. We have had a great t uh, effort from both sides of the ball, actually all three sides of the ball, for the Hobbs Eagles. As uh, reported in the Hobbs News Sun this week, uh, uh, Jason Farmer, the sports editor, said uh, this is an important thing to think about, too. These teams have only played twice in the same season, twice uh, throughout the history of these two teams, 1973 and 1981. And kind of ironically, of both of those seasons, they played twice, but the second game was a state championship that Clovis ended up winning in those games. So that's kind of a, a neat little stat there. But at the same time, although Hobbs did not win the state championship against Clovis in 73, the year before, Hobbs was a champion. Now they won in 1972. Uh, so that was a nice little win. The last time the Eagles won a state championship, of course, the other year, 31, 40, 48, 49, and 70. My birth year, by the way. Just kind of aging myself <laughs> there. But and then 72. So Hobbs has won it six times. We mentioned, though, earlier, too, the season, ser or not the season, but the uh, career series records uh, with these two teams definitely well in the pocket of the uh, Clovis Wildcats. Uh, their record is 44 and 13 against the Hobbs Eagles. So Hobbs has only won 13 times, and quite a few of those have been the last few seasons. Hobbs has pretty pretty much been dominating the Wildcats, including the first game of the season, 41 to 13. So uh, kind of shifting some stuff there, and uh, Hobbs hopefully can continue on with this 22 point lead here in the second half. Yeah, fourth yeah fourth game in a row that they'll win against Clovis if they can continue with this uh, the way they've been playing. Hobbs will get the uh, kickoff return as they will get going from right to left on the radio dial as we get back to live action here in the second half. Kicking off is the running back, Cash Roberts. He's going to keep this a blooper that dribbles off the floor, picked up with a 32, run around the left side. Henry's going to head to the near left sideline, 35, and he brought down by behind at the 39. I almost look like it could have been a... Uh, horse collar tackle there. I'm not sure if the uh, defender there had a grip or not. It kind of slipped down the back possibly, but it will be at the 30, look like the 39 yard line. So pretty good field position for the Eagles. Henry's one of those kind of stand up runners too. He's got some good size out there and he's definitely going to be a big asset in the future. He's only a sophomore. Play some defense too. So uh, this kid on special teams looking good and uh, very happy to have him in a black and gold rost or roster and a uniform. First to 10 for the Eagles. The point of the football at the 39 of the left hash leading 29 to 7 as we get underway here in the third quarter. Twins right and left for the Eagles receiving core. Callaway back in shotgun. He's got Armadiris back with him. Gives him the handoff. Angling right across the 40. Gets spun around and dropped. The oh. ball comes loose as he hits the ground. I'm not sure they're going to call that uh, fumble by ground or, or came out no. first. It looks like the ref runs in there from the sideline far right and gets him down. That will be a five-yard pickup for Armadiris and almost gave the ball back to the Wildcats inside Hobbs territory. You don't want that to start the half. Rodriguez was the one that landed on the ball. They gave him the forward progress on that one, so they did advance about a yard or two for that uh, fumble so for uh, second down. Six carries for 79 yards and over 1,000 yards for Armadaris now. Trips left, receiver right. They'll throw the screen to the left side. It's a high one. Luckily, it was thrown forward. Almost could have been a fumble. Comes off the fingertips of Armadaris on this left sideline near the Hobbs Eagle bench. Ball was thrown high in the air, kind of a bloop. A screen pass, and if that would have been a little bit more behind the line, that could have been a fumble. Clovis could have got off the near sideline and run it in for a touchdown. Right, but it also looked like it was going to be a short pass and uh, not make a lot of yards. Wildcats were all over. It could have been a loss of uh, a couple of yards. That was the first incompletion for the Eagles. They are 5 of 7 in the passing game at 122 in yards. Twins left and right again. Third down and 5 at the 44. It'll be 
Puck is in motion, gets a fake hand off right to left, though the screen to the right side to the 40, 45, 50, into Columbus territory at the 45, it's still gone. It's gonna be about a 15 yard pickup when all things are said and done. That's a great thing about the Hobbs Eagles, they don't go down easy. No, they didn't, and in fact, that was several of the Wildcats that had to uh, pretty much bring them down or slow them down and stop them. And yeah, you're right about that. He is not one to uh, go down on the first hit, and that is always a good sign for the Eagles. That was Armanderas, second catch for 18 yards, the seventh first down. Eagles now seven of eight in the passing game. Chains are moved up to the 42-yard line of the Wildcats in Clovis territory. Twins left and right. Callaway back with Armanderas out of the shotgun. Screen left, throws it backwards this time, and Black has to pick it up off the turf. Then does a somersault, trying to get back to the line of scrimmage. I just talked about that, Ron. Dangerous right. on this near left sideline in front of the Hobbs Eagle bench. That's going to end up being a loss of two. Good job for Black to recover that football and able to get it covered up there so the ball didn't go back to the Clovis Wildcats. Yeah, if it was a forward pass, it would have been uh, incomplete. Since it was a backward pass, it was, well, it was uh, good enough for a uh, somewhat of a gain. But yeah, another dangerous pass, uh, and uh, for some reason unable to catch it right away, but able to at least uh, make up for it, get that ball, and uh, run it forward. Kind of high throws there from Callaway, and the receivers having to get up on the ladder to try to pull him down. Second and 12 now for the 43. Give the handoff to Armadaris. Angles left to the 40, 35, 30. He's going to continue to move people with him to the 23-yard line. Another first down pickup. That's going to be, looks like, 22 yards for Armadaris to move the chains once again. Looks like that's exactly what Stone does on the other side. But, yeah, Saul Armadaris, we've already seen this several times, several games where he can move the ball down the field and uh, do it very well. He's over the 100 mark for this game right now, 101 on seven carries. Had 74 at the half and has 27 here in the second half. Again, over 1,000 yards on the season. Stack receivers left and right. That was the ninth first down for the Eagles at the 23. And off to Armadaris up the gut, sees the gap, 20, 15, 10, middle, out to the five, to the far sideline, and the touchdown end zone. Count it. There's Armadaris again, this time for 23 for the touchdown. And he was untouched the whole way up there, too. Just had to zigzag a little bit, get around some defenders, and before you know it, he was tasting another touchdown. Very nice for seven or six points. His third rushing touchdown of the game, 44-yarder, 7-yarder, and a 23-yarder. So three rushing touchdowns for the Eagles, all because of Armadaris and the blocking of the Hobbs Eagle offensive line. Now we get Beatty back up to kick the PAT. Hobbs up by 28, could make it 29 with the made one here. And the kick is up and it is good. 9-17 remaining here in the third. The route going on for the Hobbs Eagles up over Clovis, 36-7. First round of the 6A playoffs continue in 30 seconds. Eagles extend their lead to 29 here at Watson Stadium. First round of the 6A football playoffs. 36 to seven your score after a 23 yard touchdown romp by Armadaris, his third rushing touchdown of the ball game. Hard to stop that kid over a thousand yards this season, Ron. Especially when you can't even touch him. I mean, there was no Wildcats in the area where he was at. And even if there was, he was just juking him around. And uh, like I said, he had nobody touching him. He ran in untouched. Here goes Taylor on the kickoff. This one's got a little bit more distance. Caught at the 15, up the right hash, 20 in the middle, 25, 30, heading the far left sideline to the 35, down to the 40, to the Clovis side, and diving to the sideline, the return man for Clovis, Javier Jimenez. And he's the uh, backup quarterback as well. Goes from the 15 to about the 40, it looks like, for 25 yards that time. Some great field position there for the Clovis at the 40. And uh, they definitely need to get in the, uh, the uh, end zone quickly as they trail by 29. Right. Clovis likes to run a lot of clock, but when they're down by that many, I don't know if you can do that as much. And uh, maybe the passing game will start getting reinvented here, but they are 0 for 2 so far throwing the football in this one. Manuel Morello was uh, the one that was able to bring them down along with another Hobbs teammate. First and 10 from the 40 yard line for Clovis. Double slot, going to fake the handoff. He's going to dump the ball on the screen pass to the right flat, but it's overthrown and about two yards ahead of the guy that was blooping out there, Kyrie Phillips, coming out of the backfield. 
and uh, not looking very comfortable with the passing game whatsoever. Stone felt pressure on him in that pocket. No, he doesn't do that very often. Yeah, that looked like it was just, he tried to throw it and uh, held on to the ball a little too long and hit the ground instead. So yeah, that was uh, rather fortunate or unfortunate, whether you want to call it. Uh, but either way, it's second down for the Clovis Wildcats. Just a reminder, the first half, all their offensive yards on the ground, 187 in the running game. Second down and 10 with 9.06 remaining in the third. Double slot again, one slot in motion left to right. They're going to kick it out to the right side and try to get outside to make the run, but getting flopped down in the backfield. No chance or much progress there. Kyrie Phillips came in motion from left to right. He's going to go back for about another two-yard loss. Yeah, Solomon Medeiros along with uh, looked like it was uh, Bryson uh, Alvilla for the Hobbs Eagles brought him down in the backfield for that uh, nice three-yard loss. So that will be Phillips has uh, three carries for no yards, three minus one minus two. So he's going backwards in real estate. That'll bring up a third down and 13 now from the Clovis 32-yard line. They trail the Eagles 36 to seven. Hobbs will put four in the front box defensively. Receiver left and right for Clovis. Double slot. Back to pass. Stone wants to throw. Let's it loose on the spiral up the near sideline. Overthrows his receiver at the 30 by about five yards. And uh, going toe-to-toe, -to -toe, uh, the receiver and the cornerback for the Eagles. It looked like the Wildcat receiver, Preston Green, was taking on the defender for the Eagles, the line, or the cornerback on the near sideline. Double checking to see who that was out there. It looked like Henry was one of them that was out there. I've got a number. No, no, no. I got a four. number four, but it, once again, we've got new rosters tonight, and that number four did not show up on that roster. So um, they've been bringing a lot of sophomores onto the uh, lineups here, and I've been double checking all day about that to see if there was any add-ons. And uh, number four does not come up. That was an incomplete pass. 0 for four, the Wildcats. This is going to be a punt situation on a fourth and 13. The ball's caught at the 21, up the left hash, 30, near sideline, 35 for Hawkeyes. Gets his uh, jersey ripped from behind. He gets kind of backpedaled out of bounds. But again, decent field position for the Eagles on their next possession to try to add on to a 29-point lead. That was the second punt of the game for Clovis. Troy Richter, the sophomore for the Clovis Wildcats, was the one who was able to knock him out of bounds. So Hobbs Eagle football once again. Once again, we apologize. It looks like we do have a name finally brought to us here. Adrian Mora was number four for the Eagles. All right. Playing that cornerback position. I think he had a big play last week, I believe, uh, yeah, uh, for I believe the Hobbs so. Eagle defense. So apologize for that. Got somebody reported that to us here. Eagle football, first and 10. We'll have it at their own 37-yard line with 8.06 left here in the third, up by 29. Receiver right, known left, pitch left for the Eagles to the 35, 40, 45, 50 into Clovis territory, breaks the tackle, 40, 35, and down to the 31 yard line. Armadaris continues to move forward. Looks like that's gonna be about 32 yards for the Hobbs Eagles. Armadaris gonna move the chains once again. Yeah, about 15 or 20 yards after the first initial hit, or try the tackle anyway for that. And uh, Hobbs just matriculating them, uh, down the field once again with very little trouble four out of his five or three out of his four rushes here in the second half of double digits 22 23 and 32 yards that is the 11th first down first and 10 from the 33 of the wildcats on the left hash up 29 or 36 to 7 of the eagles twins left and right callaway back in shotgun with armadaris Gets a good snap, one step drop, stays flat, but he doesn't have to get much pressure going on him. Rolls right, still looking for an open receiver. He's gonna unload to a wide open man at the 10 yard line, in for the touchdown. That'll be a 32 yarder. Receiver just got away from the defenders, kind of lulled him to sleep, and that's Isaiah Rodriguez for another touchdown. Yeah, that was like uh, blown coverage to the max as far as uh, the Wildcats. I don't know what they were doing. They uh, Apparently they thought they saw something Tried to uh, double team somebody and uh, left a player alone just for eight nice touchdowns. Almost the same amount of yards he got on the first reception for a touchdown at a 37 yarder in the first half. That was for 36 yards and the score. So Rodriguez with 12 points on the board for his Hobbs Eagle, a high snap. Blackaber bring it down and Beatty is gonna put it through the upright. So the Hobbs Eagles now with a mercy roll lead, Ron. 36 points, 7-11 left in the third, 43-7 your score. Eagles want to punch that ticket to the quarterfinal round against Cleveland next week in Rio Rancho. We'll see how that transpires here in 30 seconds.
7-11 left third quarter. Your Hobbs Eagles lead 43-7 over Clovis. And Ron, we talked in the pregame show how battle-tested the Eagles have been in their district. Las Cruces High, Centennial, some of the top teams in the state in the playoffs. Of course, Clovis won 4-0 record beating uh, Los Lunas last week. But the bottom three in their district are pretty weak. 7-23 record this season. I think the Eagles more battle-tested and ready to go in this playoff game. Yeah, and I think they're attacking this like they did with Rio Rancho. I think they're doing very well. They're uh, doing uh, very good on both sides of the ball. Kickoff is coming as uh, Taylor gets it out to the 35. It's bobbled, kind of low to the turf, but coming up with it for the purple and white Clovis Wildcats. Elias Lira comes up with it and uh, kind of bobbled it near the turf that time and kind of juggled it. And uh, again, Taylor likes to put a lot of spin and rotation on that football, sometimes some low stuff, and it's kind of hard to handle. Not just going to drop it on a, like an onside kick, but just kind of drop it in the gaps there. And it really makes those return men kind of kind of guess where they're going to come underneath that football. Exactly. Plus, it's uh, hard to handle, so sometimes they don't uh, handle it right, uh, fumble it, and before you know it, it is a turnover to the other side. Clovis trailing 43-70 to your Eagles. 640 remaining with Mercy Roll in effect here. The clock is running. They'll send two men back to the left side of the line of scrimmage. Double slot now. Underneath the center of Stone, handoff around the left end to Cash Roberts. Tries to extend outside, but he's not going to get much. Maybe a couple yard fall forward on that one as the Hobbs Eagles converge quickly near the line of scrimmage. Forward progress did work that time, but uh, coming up for the uh, the linebacking core for the Hobbs Eagles first to get a piece of the action there was Tristan Davis, the linebacker. Boy, they gave him a lot of forward progress on that one. What, four yards? Mm, yes, at least three. But you know, uh, another thing I just realized too, uh, we were kind of talking uh, around about, about it, uh, the fact that uh, Zayden McPherson was missing last week. I think he is tonight. And Hobbs is doing well without him, but, you know, I'm sure they would like to have him in the lineup. Second out and seven now from the 38-yard line. And now it's going to be the keeper there for the quarterback, Stone. He tries to head to the same left side, and he's brought down quickly. Couldn't tell that that was a blown player or not. It looked like he was trying to hand it off, and the uh, running back did not go for it. But in the end, basically uh, got back to the line of scrimmage. 15 carries for 133 for Stone. And then, of course, Roberts, 15 carries for 54 yards, just one for three in the second half. Third down and seven for the Wildcats at their own 38-yard line on the left hash. He may they'll, have actually lost a yard. They'll send one receiver right, none to the left side. Usually have double slot, this time just a right slot. Send another receiver to the right side, shotgun to Stone. He's going to fake the handoff, tries to keep it himself, goes to the right of the line, is brought down from behind. He'll lose a couple yards on that one. Great wrap-up on the waist by Cameron Hernandez, the linebacker. He's going to be dropped for a loss of one. So that's two in a row they've lost one yard. Now they're just going backwards, and it's fourth and long, from probably about fourth and nine, actually. Yep, fourth and nine for the Wildcats at their own 36, and that's not how you get back in a ball game when you're trailing by 36. Got to get it underneath 35 to stop that mercy roll clock, and not something you want to do first round of the playoffs. In a close game, it should be an eight versus nine. Usually you have a lot more contested action in those type of games. It's kind of the games most coaches don't want to be in, to be quite frank. Yeah, but that's what happens sometimes when you, uh, you know, you're the district winner. You get that uh, extra bu bounce up as far as the uh, rankings but uh, sometimes that's not for the best for uh, what you want to do. Well, timeout on the field here, 429 remaining in this Mercy Roll game at Watson Stadium. Hobbs 43, Clovis 7. We're back in 30 seconds on the Hobbs Eagle Network. after a timeout here at Watson Stadium. 4.29 left here in the third. It's 43-7 Eagles. First round of the 6A playoffs and a punt situation for the Wildcats. They've done this two times. Lost the ball on downs twice as well. Here comes the punt from the 26. Kind of a low one. Spiral, though, hits at the Eagle 31, takes the roll on the far right sideline. Clovis will be the only guys over there to pat it down as Hobbs gets the heck out of the way. They don't have to try and return it. Right. It'll come dead about the 18, make it the 19-yard line. Not the best field position the Eagles have had on this ball game, but they have a little bit of a cushion on the scoreboard, Ron, at 36 points above the mercy rule. And it seems like no matter where they're at, 
they can matriculate down the field. In fact, you know, they can run the ball, they can throw the ball. They've had a couple of bad, or one or two bad throws, but uh, nothing that has uh, thrown them off their game. 156 yards on the ground for Armanderas so far. He's had a total of nine carries and three touchdowns already. 44, seven and 23, a big game for him, over a thousand yards on the season, just needed 47. And uh, he's already tripled that in terms of what he needed for that 1,000 mark. And Henry's gonna get the handoff in the backfield, continues to move the pile across the 20 on the right hash. He'll get at least six on this one, possibly seven for Gabe Henry. That's his first carry. His uh, seven yards matches his uniform number at seven there as he comes across the 25 to the 26. And you know, you gotta realize that uh, Armanderas missed a game, so he can, he's averaging 100 a game. Plus, he's getting more as he's going. He could get 200 yards before the night's over. Eagles keep the clock running with three minutes left in the third up, 43 to seven over Clovis. Both teams at five and five. Twins left, receiver right for the Eagles. Back in shotgun is Owing, Call Callaway I should say, head off to the left tailback. They had a split formation backfield and trying to head to the left side of the line but going down nearer the first down marker though with that forward progress. Kennedy. Yeah, Amari Kennedy getting his first uh, uh, run in the ball game and it looks like he gets close to a first. Yep, they're gonna give him three exactly so Kennedy will move the chains, his first carry for three. 12 first down for the Eagles. They'll have it now at their own 29 yard line. And once again, no fear about this uh, defense. Hobbs just able to uh, call the plays, get them in, and uh, be able to run them as well as they want. Of course, we'll have Kennedy next year. He's just a junior. Henry will be back. He's just a sophomore. So lots of good talent. We'll be turning in black and gold next season. And that's just a couple of guys we're going to look at here in the next few minutes of this game. First and 10 from the 29. Four in the front box for Clovis. Shotgun. And then Callaway's gonna get loose to the ball. Actually, that's Beatty in the game, around to the right into Henry, the 40, 45, 50, into 40 in the Clovis, 35, 30, and brought down to the 29. First down pickup, and then some. For Henry. Looks like 42 yards for Gabe Henry. That was Beatty that gave him the football, so Beatty has stepped in here in the third quarter. So 42 for Henry to move the chains again, 13 first downs. That'll be at the 29 of Clovis. Clock to 1.30 left here in the third, 43 to seven, Eagles about to run their record as six and five on the season, but more importantly, one and oh in the playoffs, Ron. And they're also gonna have a, uh, uh, well, it won't be a losing record, it'll be three and three at home. They were at two and three before this game, so that is very important as well for the Eagles. In terms of the playoffs you're talking about. Well, I'm talking about that as well, but at home, they've held three and three, they've gotten three in a row, and they want to uh, make sure that they can hang their head high and be able to say, yeah, we win here. Shotgun to Beatty, tries to hand it off right next to him. It's picked up on the fumble. Here comes Clovis, 50, 40, 30, 25, 20, 15, 10, five, touchdown. They try to get the handoff in the backfield. It got loose. Amari and Kennedy try to get out of the hands of Beatty. And that's about a 60 yard return after the fumble recovery. Yeah, that's not something that Hobbs wants to see happen very often. In fact, that was, uh, Lyra that did that for the Clovis Wildcats was able to pick that one up and run it all the way in for that touchdown. It might have been John Royal. They're, he's the one that looks like they're pumping up over there. Yeah, number 34, John Royal is the one that gets it. About a 60 yard return after the scoop. They tried to hand it off. There was a split formation, two running backs in the backfield between them uh, was Beatty. Tried to give it to the left side to Kennedy, but the ball was kind of held behind him. Ball hit the turf and then there was a scoop and go. And uh, unfortunately, Clovis back on the scoreboard. Yeah, not only that, but they're also under the uh, rule of mercy, so it will stop the clock after this uh, possession. So Royal puts the six up on the board defensively for the Wildcats. 54 seconds left in the third, but Hobbs still up by 30 points in this game. And they're gonna go for two, it appears. They'll get the single setback is, of course, Cash Roberts, they pitch left, try to cut it back, and getting dropped at the eight yard line. Way behind the line of scrimmage. No chance of the two point conversion. That was uh, Buddha Curie trying to run that one in. And the Hobbs Eagles say no can do on that one. As coming up quickly was uh, Carlos Jimenez, the cornerback, to help out on that one. Jacob Diaz was the one that got him stopped. So no good on the two point conversion. 54 left here in the third. Hobbs up by 30, 43, 13. Clovis trying to get back in this one. We'll be back in 30 seconds live on HobbsAmerica.com, YouTube, and the Cool 95.7 Facebook page on the internet and on the radio at Cool 95.7.
Hobbs Eagle is going to be returning the kickoff here momentarily as Clovis picking up a 60-yard fumble recovery for a touchdown by Royal. The missed handoff in the backfield for the Eagles. So it is under the mercy rule. 30-point game at this point. Needs to get back up past 35 or more for that to keep the clock running. And thought this game was going to end quickly, Ron. We about had about an hour and 10 minutes in that first half, and the Eagles didn't have a mercy rule at that point, but they quickly got it in the third quarter. Well, that's what happens when you don't have any complete passes or you have a lot of running going on. The uh, clock just keep on, keeps on ticking on. Cash Roberts going to kick off, expecting an onside kick, and that's what it's going to be, a bouncer to the 50. The Eagles scoop it down to 45 and come up with it. So they'll have some excellent field position. Eagles have been doing a good job of covering those onside kicks, and it looked like the man that came up with it for the Eagles that time was that linebacker, and they got a lot of good, good hands, guys, even on the defense, Tristan Davis. You're right. It was Tristan Davis. He was able to corral that one in to make sure that uh, Hobbs continues to have the ball on the offense. Think about it is, even with a 30-point lead, you want to get quick scoring. Hobbs likes to hurry up offense, keeps the defense kind of getting their tongues in their back in their mouth there, trying to catch the breath and, and move their personnel where they need to go. Hobbs might not really hike the football quickly on the hurry up offense, but it keeps personnel from trying to get in the game because coaches can't get subs in there like they like to. Yeah, and it keeps us guessing as well. First and 10 from the 44. Twins left and right, shotgun to Beatty. He's gonna hand the football off up the middle, breaking tackles to the 50 yard line up the gut. And that's going to be for the Eagles, pushing people forward, Amari and Kennedy that time. He's gonna get, looks like five yards for Kennedy. His second carry, eight total for the uh, one of the running backs coming in in this third quarter for Hobbs. Of course, we mentioned earlier that he is just a junior, so plenty more time next year for the Eagles. Second and five now at the 49, still in Hobbs Eagle territory with 25 and ticking here in the third, up by 30 are the Eagles. Yeah, Johnny Molina of the Wildcats was the one that uh, Definitely brought him down. He's a big guy. Hobbs taking a little bit more time, letting the clock run out here. They're going to have to, looks like it'll run out before the field clock does. It's about a two-second differential, so they don't have to run a play here, and that's exactly what Coach Ken Stevens wants to do. Exactly. Let the team just get their breath caught and get ready for that last quarter. So the Eagles one quarter away, 12 minutes away from the next game of the playoffs, the quarterfinals at Cleveland High School, the number one seed there in Rio Rancho. We'll come back with the Eagles here in 60 seconds live on the Hobbs Eagle Network. Hobbs Eagles winning big here at Watson Stadium. First round of the 6A football playoffs, 43-13, up by 30. And Ron, our sponsors this season for the Hobbs Eagles in the playoffs. Yeah, they are Thriftway, Robinson & Associates, Eunice Pump & Supply, Hobbs Rental, Albertson's Market, Outlaw Grill, and XL Energy. Sounds like they might be on the road with us next week as the Eagles hopefully take it on Cleveland, the number one team in the quarterfinals. Of course, La Cueva, Centennial, and Volcano Vista, the other top seeds, number one through four, gets a bye this week, but we'll have to play next week. Second down and five for the Eagles at their own 49. Shotgun to Beatty, hand off to the right side and going down quickly is Henry. Again, he's kind of a straight up runner, and if you got guys dodging you to the knees like they just did that time, hard, kind of hard to get over the top of them. Guy that took him out low, uh, Matthew Ochoa, and that's going to be no gain, maybe a loss of one on the play there for Henry. Two. He cannot fall forward the way he wanted to. So, yeah, he did lose two on that one. You're right. Yeah, and that uh, just uh, – yeah, the defender was all over him as soon as he got the ball. So, yeah, it's hard to run when you got somebody on you, although Henry has done that in the past. But, yeah, that was a big guy. Of course, earlier in this in the third quarter, he had a 42-yarder, so that kid can move once he gets across the line of scrimmage. Third down and seven now for the Eagles. Still running some clock here at the 40 make, – make it the 48-yard line. Four on the front rocks for Clovis. Twins left and right for the Eagles. Back to pass, Beatty gets chased. Throws it in the right flat. It's caught at the 45, to the 50, to the 40, to the 30, to the 20, to the 15, the 10, the 5, the touchdown. Amarian Kennedy, he's going to go in from 52 yards out as the Hobbs Eagles back into the mercy roll column. Yeah, and once again, uh, Wildcats uh, score. Hobbs answers really quickly to get back into it. And like you said, Is make it a, flag, a mercy though? roll. Is there a flag, Ron? Everybody's stopping and looking around here. Referees are Let's meeting see. your midfield. 
That would have been a 52-yarder for Kennedy. And it looks like the white cap is waving everybody back. Bad uh, sign. I don't see the flag out there, but uh, there it is. Back of the 44. Back with the Hobbs Eagles uh, at the line of scrimmage. That's going to be a penalty from the line. So probably a hold. Well, that is something that you, has been happening so far this season. We've had a big score brought back uh, by a penalty. And uh, this is once again. So I think they're uh, consistent on that part. Let's see. I didn't see a signal from the official. There it is. Oh, blindside block. It's even worse. That's a 15-yarder, Ron. Right. Big uh, personal foul. Basically, blindside block is if you're going to hit somebody that isn't watching you, you got to get your hands out and hit. You can hit it from the side, not from the back, of course, but from right. the side. But you got to have the extended arm. So I guess the ref didn't see that. 15-yard penalty for the Eagles. Only their second of the game, and ironically, it was a 15-yarder earlier in the first half. So two penalties for 30 only for the Eagles. They've really cleaned up their action in terms of getting those yellow handkerchiefs. An unfortunate one there as it cuts that touchdown off the scoreboard. And usually one of those uh, penalties doesn't really matter, and it, it could have been a score without that, but unfortunately it did get brought back. So Eagles now facing a third down and 25 now from the 33-yard line, leading by 30, 43-13. Back to pass Beatty, a three-step drop. Fires down the middle of the post route, caught at the 45, 40, 30, 25, 20, 15, far sideline, 10, 5, touchdown. This one's going to go even longer than that as the man getting that catch for the Eagles was Deshaun Franklin. So he's going to go in. Started at about the 32-yard line. That's going to be a total of 68. 68 yards for Franklin. Yeah, once again, you know what? You're going to get, uh, take away one of our scores. We're going to go ahead and score again in the next play, and that's exactly what they did. First catch for Franklin in this contest. And that was the second reception in the, or make it the third reception here in the second half. The Eagles have only thrown for 75 yards in the second half. 62 of those coming at the catch from Franklin. Here comes the PAT as well from the uh, quarterback that's in the game. His brother, the sophomore Beatty, kicks it through the uprights. 10-12 left here in the fourth. Your Hobbs Eagles back into a mercy roll game. and They met the half century mark now, 50-13 to over Clovis. We're coming back strong in 30 seconds, live on HobbsAmerica.com, YouTube, Cole 95.7 Facebook page. Nine forty-six left here in the fourth. The clock will run here as the Mercy Rule be in effect. Hobbs up by thirty-seven points. Mercy Rule is at thirty-five, and uh, Clovis gets on the board here in this second half run, but not enough because the Eagles are on a roll. Exactly. It seems like every time that the Wildcats are managed to uh, get a score, whether it be offense, defense, Hobbs answers. Here's the kickoff for the Eagles. Back from Taylor, the ball's caught and brought across the 20, 25, and down to the 28-yard line. Big pile of black and gold to knock down the ball returner there. Lots of guys coming out of the bottom of the pile there as getting the initial hit underneath on the legs there for the Eagles was Tristan Davis as he brings down Kyrie Phillips for the Wildcats. But they have to hurry up and do it quickly with the clock running. And a running game that you have for Clovis does not help the clock situation. No. Unless it's a breakaway run going into the end zone. But passing has not worked at all. They are 0 for 4 so far. I've not completed one yet. Yeah, neither team so far has utilized any of their, really utilized any of their uh, timeouts. Maybe that's something that uh, Clovis will have to do on this drive. 50 to 13 the score here in the fourth quarter. Underneath the center, wishbone formation for the purple and white. Stone taking his time now, gives it off to the, fakes the tailback, then goes out with the option to the right side around the end, 30, 35, far right to the Clovis sideline and breaking a tackle. Going to be close to the first down. I think he went out by maybe eight or nine yards down the field. That's Phillips. Yep, Kyrie. Phillips. Yep, Kyrie Phillips. He's been doing some special teams work as well. They're going to say he stepped out after about, looks like a seven-yard gain for Phillips. That's his best of the night so far. He had two negative carries at this point and only has a total of seven yards on four carries. Second down and three now from the 36-yard line on the right hash for Clovis on their side of the field. Clock is not their ally. 8-15 and counting, down by 37 here at Watson Stadium. Back to a wishbone, receiver left. 
Underneath the center, Stoney had a man in motion going to the right side. Give the handoff to the tailback around the right end. 35, 40, gets a first down and gets tripped up after the first down pickup. That'll be a five yard gain on the right end near the Clovis sideline. Carlos Jimenez was the one that tripped him up for the Hobbs Eagles. Trying to see if that was Phillips again. Yes, no, it, that, no, it was. I think it was. I'll give him five on that one. So back to back positive gains for 12 total on those two runs for Phillips and the 14th, or make it the ninth first down for Clovis. First and 10 from their own 41 on the right hash. Clock continues to run with the mercy roll. 7.35 remaining. Eagles up by 37. One receiver left. They move out of the wishbone to a double slot. Single setback is Cash Roberts. Goes around the right side to the 45. Puts his head down and clunks ahead for a couple more. And he's going to get six on that one for Cash Roberts. Been very quiet in the second half. Two carries for nine yards. Only has 60 in the ball game. And he's the type of kid that averages over 100 yards a contest and 1,000 uh, plus this season. Exactly, yeah. Two players with over 100 yards a game. You know you're going to hear something from them. But so far, like you said, uh, the cash has been limited, or at least it's been held down to a bare minimum. Yeah, he came in at 1,149 yards, averaging 127 yards a game. Uh, he is not even even close to getting to the 100-yard the mark in this one. Second down and three from the... 47 yard line. Matt in motion to the right side to pitch out to the far sideline to Clovis Bench, but he runs out of bounds behind the line of scrimmage. Could not get the space he needed with the short field on the right side. Maybe about uh, minus two on that one for Phillips. They continue to pitch it out to him. He's going to lose two on that play. Yeah, they thought that the blockers would be able to open up another lane like they had before, but this time around, Hobbs was ready for it. They usually say that, you know, you can burn me once, but you can't do it again. Hobbs learned that lesson and they shut that lane down. Six carries, 10 yards for Phillips. Third down and seven for the Wildcats at the 44 of their own. Matt in motion right to left, lining up, and we got movement on the right side of the line and the backfield at the same time for Clovis. The man in motion coming from right to left was Caden Lott, and it looked like his right side of the line jumped, but they might have said Hobbs came off that time first. Yeah, yep. they did. It was a, uh, a fraction on that one for Hobbs, so a jump for a uh, offsides and uh, five extra yards for uh, the uh, Wildcats. They got a third and short. Yep, third about a yard and a half. That's only the third penalty of the game. A total of 35 yards against the Eagles. Two of those for 15 yards. Third and one and a half from the 48. Eagles jump it again, but I don't think they broke the plane that time on nope. the left defensive line. Double slot, single setback is Cash Roberts. He's going to get the handoff. Heads left through the gap. Across the H in the middle of the field and into Hobbs territory. Will be a first down plus. Looks like he's in up with six, does Cash Roberts, to move the chains for Clovis. Yeah, had uh, two, uh, at least had one uh, eagle on his back, but uh, definitely drug two along for a couple more yards. 66 yards on the ground, 18 carries for Roberts. That is the 10th Clovis first down, right on the 45-yard uh, line, near the middle of the field there in Hobbs territory. Clock, though, is running out for Clovis. 5-10 remaining. Not much urgency, Ron. You kept talking about the passing game. Where the heck is it? Yeah, well, just like last time, we saw this, too, in Clovis where they were just playing a uh, 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 see what there was going to happen, you know, make uh, smart decisions. Handoff around the right end, trying to cut back, but met in the backfield. Going down hard is Caden Lott. Nothing doing on that one. That was his first carry of the ball game, and boy, a bunch of black and gold uh, uniformed clad guys in the backfield that time. And uh, first guy in there, big man for the Hobbs Eagle defensive line to drop into the turf is Jaron Meredith, the senior defensive tackle. Yeah, once again, it looks like they've accepted the fact that they cannot win this game, so they're just gonna play as best as they can. But yeah, there should be a little bit more urgency for the Wildcats. Minus two for Lott, second down and 12 now at the Eagle. 30, make it the 47 yard line. Wishbone formation. Stone hands it off to, makes the handoff, keeps it himself, runs around the left end of the 45, stretches out near side 40, 35 out of bounds in front of the Hobbs Eagle bench, and a late flag might be a late hit on the Eagles. Took a shot on the quarterback as he came outside, or maybe a horse collar. That's happened once in this game already. That's going to be, it looks like a 14 yard pickup, then tack on the extra. Yeah, it looked like it was a horse collar from here as he uh, was heading towards the sideline. That is an unfortunate thing, but sometimes you get uh, caught out of uh, position. You try to just wrap them up, and you go a little high on that one. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's going to go ahead and uh, probably move the ball uh, for the Wildcats. 
Uh, Ron, I don't appreciate you pulling oh, my darn it. my hoodie uh, like you just did to show me it was a horse car. They couldn't see you doing it, but you pulled <laughs> my hoodie and almost choked me to death there. Oh, uh, well, it looks like actually it wasn't because it looked like the uh, I thought I saw the quarterback go backwards, but apparently it was something else all together. Was it a block in the back possibly? Now the uh, white cap official is waving off the clock here. I don't know what the call was on that one. It could have been a hold on that one too, because uh, what well, was on the end of the play? I think there might have been yeah. a legal block down on this Hobbs Eagle sideline left side. They back it up to the 48-yard line, so I'm not sure what happened because that, unless it was a 15-yard penalty somewhere, I don't know what the heck they had on that one. Right, exactly. You know, we're gonna probably not uh, figure it out anytime soon. Uh, unless we get some uh, indication as far as uh, a well, listener or well, something. The, the play went past the uh, first down marker, right. but now it's back behind the original line of scrimmage, so there hadn't been a 15-yarder on that one because the flag came out on the end of the play. That's what I thought, too. That's unless way past the first down marker, which would have been an easy first down call there. That was about exactly. a 12-yard 12, 12 pickup. But since you go behind the original line of scrimmage, so that would be a 15-yarder against Clovis. Uh, maybe they had a spearing or something where somebody tried to block for him and just put his hel helmet down and win. So that will be a 15-yarder race it against the Eagles. And that will be the first penalty of the second half for Clovis. They have five for a total of 35 yards so far. And now a second down and 13 for the Wildcats back at the 48 of the Eagles. And that's a momentum killer for the uh, Clovis Wildcats, no matter how you look at it. 350 and counting with the Mercy Roll clock. Hobbs up 50 to 13. Twins left and right, shotgun for Stone. One step drop, he's gonna throw the slant route, but throws it into the turf at the 40. Actually, a new quarterback has checked in for Clovis. Uh, that was Javier Jimenez, the freshman quarterback, uh, incomplete on the first throw, and a dismal 0 for 5 in the passing game for the Wildcats. But we knew coming in, they were not very efficient in the passing game. They like to run the football, and that's an understatement. Yeah, in fact, uh, last week against Los Lunas, they only had one play, or one pass, that was completed out of three. 16 yards was the uh, completion. So, uh, yeah, they do not uh, live or die on the uh, pass play. They just try to do it ever so often, but uh, this time around, they died on it. And that was a uh, big upset win over Los Lunas, 30 to 29 last week. Big numbers on the ground, though, 388. Rolling right once again. Jimenez is going to throw it on the out route and overthrows his receiver near the first down marker on the far right sideline as the pass was intended for Buda Curry. You can tell this kid's a freshman, doesn't have the footing and the, the ability to, to kind of aim that football towards the numbers that time. He just kind of yanked back through it, kind of a yo-yo out there, way in far advance of the right receiver. He was kind of trying to move to the far right sideline on the out route. Right. Now an incomplete, fourth down and 13. A big play here for Clovis. They're well out of this ball game, but they like to put some more points on the scoreboard, trailing 50 to 13 to the Eagles with 225 and ticking. Again, the clock's running on the incomplete due to the mercy rule. Yeah, they're not going to fold up and die. They're going to keep trying to get down the field. Twins right, receiver left. Rolling right again, the quarterback. Jimenez to the far sideline to the 50. He's going to run it, tuck it to the 45, 40. Cuts back, 35, first down to the middle of the field, 30, 25. The freshman's still on his feet and down to the 20. 21 yard line. He would not quit on that one. So that's a 28 yarder for the freshman to get the chains to move again for Clovis. And again, that's more of those uh, coverage uh, plays where he didn't see anybody down the field, so he had to make it his own. And uh, Hobbs was uh, so busy trying to make sure that the receivers were taken care of that uh, nobody checked on the uh, quarterback. 11 first downs based on that run. The first of the game for Jimenez, the backup quarterback, 28 yards on that one. And now Coach McCraw's gonna call the timeout. He wants to get that 20th point of the game if he can score on this play. 136 left in the contest. We're gonna keep it right here. Uh, Ron, continue with some of our sponsors uh, for the Hobbs Eagle playoffs this season. Yeah, once again, Thriftway, Robinson & Associates, Eunice Pump & Supply, Hobbs Rental, Albertson Market, Outlaw Grill and XL Energy. Thank you very much for being sponsors, especially for this uh, playoff season. Yeah, we'll have another game for them next week, of course. And for you, the listener out there or who are watching on the internet, Hobbs will be at Cleveland High School. That will be in Rio Rancho. I'm, we haven't been told yet. Probably more likely a Saturday. But, Ron, Eagles are 1-0 at Cleveland High School this year. Not against the Storm, but they've had to beat Rio Rancho there. Rio Rancho had that power outage the right. day of the game or the night before that screwed up their electrical system there. And I think it was a squirrel that got involved in the, uh, the circuitry there and screwed up everything. So, anyway, that game had to be moved to Cleveland High School. That was homecoming for Rio Rancho. And so the Eagles have gone 1-0 there. That's a very good deal. So, Hobbs 
Cubs hopefully get a chance to pick off the storm. First to 10 for the 20, Clovis football. Single setback is Roberts. Gonna give the ball off to him. He scampers up the middle on the gap and falls forward to the 17, maybe the 16 yard line as he'll get four. Yeah, but they can't uh, chip it away now. There's very little time. They're gonna either have to stop the clock or get moving and uh, try to see if they can get another score in. Looks like they're gonna give him four. Second down and six now. Ball's placed at the 17 yard line. More like three it looks like for Roberts on that one as they adjust the ball just a bit. Receiver left side, again no urgency for the Wildcats. 55 seconds left in their season with a double slot. Roberts in the backfield underneath the center is that Jimenez. Back to pass, three step drop, stays pocket, a post route to the middle of the end zone. Overthrows the receiver, they're gonna say the Eagle pushed him in the back first. Incomplete, it sails to the back of the end zone, but it looks like a P.I. is gonna be called. Yeah. That will be half the distance, which should be enough for the first down. Exactly, even though uh, that uh, was about at least a yard or two over his head, and he would not have been able to catch it. So unfortunately, Hobbs makes a little mistake, little gaff, and it is a hold call against the Eagles. Oh, P.I., they're pushing the back there. Eight and a half yards of what it'll be of the half the distance on that one, because they are at the 17 right now. So that will be enough for the first down regardless. That's a total of 14 first downs for Clovis, which doesn't look bad on paper, but the scoreboard's the problem. Right. 50 to 13, 37 point lead for the Eagles in mercy roll. Twins right, oh, also a slot right. They're gonna give the handoff around the right end to Roberts, tries to cut it back towards the middle and gets plowed down at the six yard line. So it looks like from the 10 to the six, he'll get a four yard pickup for Roberts, but that's not gonna help the clock for his cause as it continues to run with 22 seconds left. Hurry up offense now for the Wildcats. Double slot, Roberts in the backfield. Single receiver right, back to Roberts again, round the right end, puts his head down and plows forward, and he's gonna get down for a couple more yards, but the clock is dangerously for Clovis at seven seconds. Yeah, unless they stop the clock, uh, they're gonna try to run it without this. Clock down to three, two, one, and this Howard sounds. They're gonna get the handoff right before, I think. A plow towards the goal line, and Roberts does not make it. The Hobbs Eagle defense stops the touchdown. One yard pickup, that is the ball game. Hobbs Eagles are excited on the sideline, stopping the last score there. 50 to 13 is the final. Your Hobbs Eagles victorious by 37. First round of the 6A state playoffs at Watson Stadium. We'll take a three minute break, come back with the Hobbs Eagle post game show live here at Watson on your Hobbs Eagle stations.
Big win for your Hobbs Eagles here at Watson Stadium. First round of the 6A football playoffs, 50-13. to 13. The Eagles win in mercy roll fashion. Of course, the Wildcats only getting a couple of touchdowns in this game. Uh, Stone, their quarterback, at a 64-yard run in the second quarter and a 60-yard fumble recovery for a touchdown for Royal in the third quarter. Hobbs Eagles scored one TD in the first, a 37-yard pass to Rodriguez from Callaway. Also a two-point conversion from Cameron Hernandez. Eagles scored three touchdowns in the second quarter. Armanderas with a 44-yard run for a score, a 60-yard pass from to Hawkes from Callaway, and a seven-yard run for Armanderas. He had two touchdowns in the second quarter. Hobbs up 29 to seven at halftime. In the third quarter, Eagles with two scores, 23-yard run for Armanderas, and a 36-yard pass from Callaway to Rodriguez. That was Rodriguez's second touchdown of the ball game. And finally, the last play for scoring, at least, in the fourth quarter, a 60-yard pass uh, for the Eagles, and that uh, ended up in the hands of uh, Mr. Franklin, Deshaun Franklin, scoring on that one. So Hobbs, again, one score in the first, three touchdowns in the second, two in the third, and one in the fourth, outscoring Clovis 3-1 to one in the second half of action. Big win uh, for uh, the Hobbs Eagles. Before we get to the stats in this game, Ron, you said this uh, quite a few times. You, you needed to see penetration in this game. Uh, we saw one of the best backs, or we should say uh, one of the best backs, either running back or quarterback in the state in terms of the running game. Uh, Roberts being held at a 76 yards. That's almost exactly the same numbers I believe he had against the Eagles in game one of the season. So he's averaging over 130 yards a game. So he got uh, shut down almost uh, half of what he normally gets in a contest. Pretty n big numbers there for the Hobbs Eagle defense. But at the same time, Stone did manage 146, the quarterback, but still, Great job of shutting people down, especially that last touchdown drive. Right. They stopped him at the goal line there. They did not get their final score of the game when time expired. And you know what I thought was going to happen was because the uh, gun went off, I had a feeling that uh, it looked like it didn't get, uh, the play wasn't uh, played, and the Hobbs Eagles were going to go ahead and just start celebrating. But instead, they did not. They stuck with the uh, game plan. They did stop him from scoring. It could have been, you know, it would have been under 35. It wouldn't really matter to any. It was just more or less uh, junk uh, points. But still, it was something that made me proud that uh, Hobbs, the uh, the defenders, were still in there. They were still playing the game. Even in the final seconds, even when you thought that possibly the game was over with, they still stopped the uh, runner from uh, getting there. It was probably just, looked like it was uh, mere just inches from the goal line. And this is a game that shouldn't be a blowout like this. An eight versus nine seed, that usually your your rubber match between the two. Of course, Clovis had some uh, uh, trying to get back at the Eagles because of the big loss the start of the season. 41-13, right. uh, Hobbs winning on the road to open it up in Clovis. So you thought they'd be a revenge factor there, but uh, Hobbs doing a blowout. Now you're going to see b bigger blowouts between you know top seeds and lower way low seeds, but you don't usually see that in the eight nine game. But Hobbs took care of business and uh, shut this one down early. Again, they were up big at halftime uh, by. 22. Let's look at the numbers for the Wildcats. As expected, the running game was there for at least Stone, their quarterback. 17 carries, 146 yards. He did score off a 64 yarder, so uh, that to almost half of what his total rushing numbers were. Did have some other double digit runs, uh, another long of 24 in this game, but uh, again, you know, the quarterback can only do so much. You're trying to do, you know, right. hand the ball off, you're flipping it out on the, uh, you know, option play, tucking it yourself. You get tired after a while, but still 146 yards on the ground. He was up ahead of his uh, normal average on the season on over 1,100 1, yards uh, this season on rushing for Stone. Uh, the guy that was well beneath his numbers, averaging 130 a game, was uh, Roberts, Cash Roberts, 22 carries for 76 yards. He only had about three double-digit runs of a 15, 11, and 10, but uh, no scoring in this game for Roberts. Of course, he's a guy that's uh, used to getting in the end zone double-digit uh, touchdowns this season for the Wildcats. Was shut down big-time numbers there uh, for the Hobbs Eagles tonight. Jimenez, the backup quarterback, had one rush for 28 yards, and he was the third best in terms of rushing. Phillips had six carries for 10 yards. We saw him quite a bit in the fourth quarter. And then one other guy came in, Conley, had one carry for three. So they all the offense, as we knew was going to probably be the case, was on the uh, running game. 261 unofficially for the Wildcats. No passing. 0 for 6 in this game. They did have 11 uh, first downs, a majority of those in the first half. Just didn't see the consistency in the second half. And I'm starting to wonder, we talked about this at halftime, whether exhaustion kind of set in here because they have a lot of guys going both ways. Plus, you got a lot of high emotions, too. This is a playoff game, you know, and uh, Clovis had not been looking like a playoff team, and it, and it showed out there as well. Again, you were talking about the fact that uh, Roberts wasn't able to get as many yards as he has been in the past as far as his average. Well, he got 75 yards in the first game. He made 76 in the second, so he's 
I guess you could say consistent against this uh, his defense. His average against Hobbs. His <laughs> average against Hobbs is lower. It's about 75 right now. Yeah. He is consistent. However, if it wasn't for Stone, they could have been blown away easily. It could have been a possible mercy rule ending with 50 points. However, uh, Stone was able to get uh, moving and grooving, was able to get that long run as well to uh, get him back in the game somewhat. And, uh, yeah, again, if it wasn't for Stone and uh, – and this uh, somewhat of an offensive line that they have, uh, they, this could have been a much worse game for the Clovis Wildcats. Wildcats finished with five penalties for 35 yards in the contest. Uh, they punted it uh, three times and gave up on downs three as well. No turnovers in the game, though. We should mention that. That's right. kind of a, a big stat that it comes out on both sides, and that's what coaches want to see. Uh, you don't want to have to give away the ball. You've practiced all season long, don't cough it up for no reason. Uh, we did see, uh, what was it, One we did see some balls hit the turf a few times. but uh, there Well, we did see the fumble that went in for the touchdown. Oh, I'm sorry. What am I yeah, saying? Yeah. There, so, there is a one so big yes. one. Sorry. Yes, yes. That was that one big one that uh, Hobbs did, but luckily they were so far ahead that it did not uh, hurt them as much. But, yeah, you're right. Clovis was clean. I think they had one turnover on downs, and that was it. They did have the turnover on downs because of the field goal that they missed. Other than that, uh, they played uh, well on that end of the game. If you want to, you know, look at anything as far as a uh, win for the for the Wildcats. Again, that was a 60-yard uh, pickup and go on the uh, fumble recovery. Um, I'm trying to remember who did that one. That was a Royal that came up with that one on the – Miss handoff in the backfield from the Hobbs Eagles. It scampered in for the touch on their second score of the ball game. So just one turnover for the Eagles right. on the fumble. Looking at the Hobbs Eagle numbers, uh, victorious in this one tonight. And boy, again, pretty balanced offense. Uh, the 275 in the ground and 233 in the air. Now, why did they get 275 on the ground? Predominantly uh, Saul Armadaris, nine carries, 156 yards. He doubled what he needed to get over the 1,000-yard mark this season, so definitely a big game for him. Three rushing touchdowns, uh, 44, 7, and 23. Had another couple of double-digit runs in the second half, 22 and 32, including that 23-yard touchdown, but uh, he only carried the ball nine times tonight with 156, so, uh, you know, that's a a very impressive numbers. What is that? Seventeen plus a carry. Exactly. Uh, in this game. Yeah, he was uh, when he was getting onto it. He was really moving the uh, moving and grooving. Definitely getting those first downs, moving the markers along with the Hobbs Eagles. And uh, yeah, we saw this uh, a couple weeks ago when he did the uh, what was it two uh, two hundred and seventy yards or however much it was that he he got. No, it was three hundred something. And uh, he ended up uh, breaking the school record on that one. He did a really good job this time around. Once again, he was limited. So it's it's really nice to see that uh, he can run on such few uh, carries and make so many yards. I'm sure that uh, Coach Stevens, once again, is going to be like, wow, I did not realize that he had so many yards in this game. Also, he had some compliments out there, too. Uh, Jaquez, uh, three for 43 at a 32-yarder in the game, coming out of that uh, motion uh, around the end stuff. Uh, Callaway, two carries for 21. Henry, the sophomore, three carries for 47. He had a 42-yard run in this ball game. Right. Kennedy had two for eight. And so there you have uh, five different guys that got a chance to run the football tonight. Again, unofficially, 275 yards on the ground for the Eagles. They had 19 carries to get that many yards. That's uh, pretty impressive. So um, definitely a, a very good situation for the Eagles. A new, some new kids, younger kids on the squad moving up and getting a chance to get some experience. They'll have a couple more seasons, some of them in, in Hobbs Eagle uniform. Uh, the passing department, Hobbs uh, 10 of 11 in the passing game tonight, and that uh, majority of that was uh, Callaway who started. Uh, Beatty did come in uh, in the second half as Hobbs had the mercy rule going at, at one point. But a uh, couple guys stepping up big, Jaquez, uh, three catches for 80 yards, one for 60 for a touchdown after a deflection off a cornerback, able to take it and go into the end zone, about a 20-extra-yard run after he caught it, right. had a 16-yard catch as well. Uh, Rodriguez had two touchdown receptions, both of his catches for touchdowns for 73 yards, 37 in the first half a catch, and a 36-yarder in the second half. So kind of a bookend situation for Rodriguez. Uh, Franklin. Uh, had a catch for 62 yards and a touchdown in the second half. He's the only catch of the game. Armadaris coming out of the backfield for a couple of snags for 18 yards. So lots of guys getting involved in this one. Even Black had a couple of catches as well. So total of 233 yards in the air, 10 of 11 in the passing game for Callaway. So 275 run, 233 pass unofficially, 508 yards for the Hobbs Eagles in this one compared to 261 just in running uh, for Clovis. So Definitely a big game for them, almost doubling the numbers of uh, Clovis in this contest. Uh, penalty situation, not a bad 
problem for Hobbs. They had one penalty in the first half for 15 and finished up with three penalties in the second half for about 20, uh, 29 yards. So 44 yards on four penalties, a lot lower than what we've been seeing. They had close to 100 yards last week and uh, definitely was a, a problem for the Eagles. A total of 14 first downs compared to 11 for Clovis. And Hobbs uh, up uh, at the half again, up by 22, and extend the lead uh, to the Mercy Roll by 37 again, 50 to 13. They go six and five, punch their ticket to the quarterfinals against Cleveland next week, Ron. And they do something that they rarely do against this uh, Clovis team. They put up 50, they put up half a century mark on them. They needed to do that to uh, get uh, assurances that their offense was on the right track. Their defense is hitting on all cylinders. One little fumble and they uh, let up a score, but other than that, there are very little things that you can see that are negative about this Hobbs team that are going into uh, what we'd call basically a, uh, a must-win situation against a team that has just dominated against Hobbs. 0-7 is the record Cleveland has right now, and uh, it's going to be a tough one. It's always tough, especially when you have a three-time defending champion, as we do with the uh, Cleveland Storm that we're going to be seeing next week. Yeah, it's very important the Eagles come out quickly in that game. Hobbs has won on that turf this year against Rio Rancho, a team that's ranked in the top ten. They can they, they know that the field the field it's a very big field there. Um, I mean, there's going to be Cleveland fans like to pack the house there. The Storm right. used to winning. I mean, year after year, they're in the 6A hunt. It, it doesn't matter. They usually have Real Rancho on their heels in the same district. Uh, Cleveland winning that big in the district championship last week. So, I mean, it's no, no, uh, you know, it's not like a big guess that Cleveland's going to be vying for a championship these last few years. Exactly. And, you know, it's uh, really interesting that when you think about the fact that they've been so successful six uh, championship games since 2011. They, uh, they've only been around since 2009. That's when they were formed. And the only reason why they were formed in the first place was simply because Rio Rancho was so crowded, so overwhelmed by all these students that they had to get a second school. And Cleveland was opened as soon as they could. And once again, you know, I guess they got all the cream in the crop from that area, from the Rio Rancho area, because they have been winning a lot of things. And uh, football, like I said, six championships the last uh, three years or four years now. Uh, since 2019, they've won. They also won in 2011 and 2015. So they have definitely got the uh, the winning in their blood. And uh, it's going to be uh, a lot of uh, process to be able to get somebody to go in there and knock them off. But if you know what what we need to do, we need to look at that Artesia game because Artesia did it well. Yeah, Cleveland came back in the end, but they weren't able to get that victory. Artesia was able to beat them. Artesia of all, play, of all teams, the one that lost against Roswell this season. You never know who's going to win. So... We have a good chance of winning if we can uh, kind of like duplicate that Artesia win or we can duplicate what we did tonight and uh, be able to get uh, some momentum going for the uh, game. Yeah, Artesia 35-34, the final. That was back on September 15th. Uh, Cleveland, not a big fan of Texas this year either. Amarillo uh, got a win over him, 28-27. And then a blowout, El Paso Franklin uh, trounced on uh, Cleveland this year as well. Uh, final on that one, actually no friendship, excuse me, 35 to nothing, uh, friendship Texas. So just right. down the road near Lubbock there, a uh, big win in that one as well. So a couple wins from Texas schools. Uh, so those three losses this season, uh, again, you know, they come back big, you know, in the uh, district, uh, uh, picking off uh, Volcano Vista 35-12. Um, also, at Trisco Heritage, 56-6. Cibola, 61-7. In their last game, the district championship over Rio Rancho, 37 to nothing, And a team, that, a team that the Eagles beat earlier this season. So, Hobbs has got the uh, uh, tough tough game on the road. Uh, I'm pretty sure that game will be Saturday. We don't have any official word on that yet, usually because of the travel time and, and mileage, mileage and all that. NMA has rules about a certain amount of mileage. You, you do get a Saturday game out of it, but uh, more than likely, Hobbs will be up there. Temperatures, weather is going to be pretty decent throughout the rest of the week and right. into next week. I'm not quite sure what that's going to change like, but uh, we can be 70s and 80s the rest of this week, but uh, next week, maybe the weather more like fall up there in Albuquerque. Playing on a field that's got legend there, and it's also got uh, a chance for the Eagles to play on that field chart they're used to so they're ready to go with the 1-0 record at Storm Stadium this year. Yes and just a, a quick note for the uh, Tularoso Jal game it did not go to the wire at all in fact Jal uh, pretty much did what they did the, the second half of the last uh, game they played against Tularoso it was a big win for Tularoso they move on 42-6 to so they can be playing the winner of the uh, Esca, uh, Estacanta versus Eunice. Eunice probably is going to win they're uh, ranked number one at 8-2 so uh, that's probably going to be uh, Eunice and Tolerosa in the next game.
Of course, the Utes will be hosting that game tomorrow. You can catch it on all our stations, HobbsAmerica.com, the YouTube Unis Sports page, and also on the Internet, too, with the radio station Facebook page as well. So pretty exciting game. Lovington Wildcats have a bye tonight, uh, number one seed in the uh, uh, 4A division, so or 3A division. They're going to be making sure that they're going to punch their ticket to a state championship. Uh, that'll be a game next week at KZOR. We'll handle that uh, coverage of those games as they continue on in the playoffs. And speaking of a game that is going to be covered tomorrow, we got the uh, Hobbs Eagles soccer team, 20-0. They are undefeated so far. They're going to go up against Gadsden, number eight, and uh, they're going to be going for their fr uh, first championship or their next championship since 1997. So that should be interesting. That, that one step should be a pretty good game tomorrow right here at Watson Stadium. 1.30, I believe, is uh, the uh, time of they're going to start it. And uh, they are looking for a lot of support out there from fans to uh, be able to come up here and be able to support the Eagles to a victory. Of course, they have a coach that won the championship last year with Lovington, so he knows what he's doing, uh, trying to get these these kids back in that trophy mode here in Hobbs. So, again, final score, Mercy Roll victory for the Hobbs Eagles, 50-13, to winning by 37 over the Wildcats, 6-5 and five record for the Eagles. The Wildcats finish their season at 5-6. and six. I'd like to thank our sponsors of Hobbs Eagle football throughout the playoffs, including IPS, Lee County State Bank, TDS, Forest Tire, R360, Norley Hospital, Lasco Construction, RMS Foods, Thriftway Grocery, Robinson & Associates, Eunice Pump & Supply, Hobbs Rental, Albertson Market, Outlaw Grill, and XL Energy. I'd like to thank Tiffany Stuber back at the station for Ron Gunner, myself, Ty Friend. Next week, we got Hobbs Eagle playoffs in the quarterfinals. They'll be in Rio Rancho to take on the Cleveland Storm. Thanks for listening tonight, and we'll see you next week on your Nomark Broadcasting Stations. Have a great Friday night.